He umpired the grand final here last year. And umpire Marcy now coming in with Port Melbourne kicking to the left of the screen and Sandringham towards the junction end of the right of the screen. There's Annenson getting a big knockout from the ruck. Paul Goss met very solidly then. No one able to break away with the ball. They're going in pretty hard. But umpire Marcy has picked a free kick out of it to Critch of the Port Melbourne side. Now Critch with um, Carroll on his mark. There's Carroll racing after him, but there's the kick going up towards the half-forward line. No one's able to take the big mark down there, and it'll be Edwards of Sandringham coming out with it. He gets the hand pass in across here to McNicholas, and Big McNicholas gets a uh, further hand pass in across to Thompson. Thompson up towards the half-forward line. Owen uh, spills it, and it comes through to Beecroft. Beecroft of Port racing right up the field. It goes up towards the uh, forward pocket. Tony Hainan pulled around the neck. Must get a free kick, and the umpire shut his eyes. Oh, abuse right into the back of him. A push in the back. Look at this lady here. She can't believe it either. Anyway. Big fellows come in. McNicholas coming in from behind. And there he goes with the tap out. But straight to a Port Melbourne player. That's Rasmussen it was. Up towards full forward. And Cookie tried to Shepherd. He's called it a goal. But the umpire says touched. And through for one point. One and a quarter minutes into play. I expect a great duel between these two down there for today, Phil. Fred Cook and Alf Puse. Yes, well, uh, Fred didn't get a vote in the Liston, so I suppose he might end up doing something. Anyway, it comes up towards the uh, centre-half back position, punched down to the ground, players moving in. Hand pass there by uh, Harlan. Harlan gets it out wide towards Edwards. He's racing after it, but the Sandringham player beats him to the ball, and the player concerned was Bell. Bell gets it around the boundary line. Lyons just keeps in play. And Lyons of Sandringham up to Wilkins. He'll be a devastating player here today, I reckon, Wilkes, Wilkins. It goes across to Carroll. Carroll with a hand pass here to Lyons. And Lyons of Sandringham up towards the forward zone. Up they fly for it. And a brilliant mark taken down here on the forward line by Lorb. He gets the uh, short pass in. And look at that for a mark by Hutchison. One-handed mark. A beautiful start to the big game here today. Port Melbourne one point. Sandringham about to put it through for full points. Good start on the part of Sandringham. Two and a half minutes into the start of play. Well, there we go with the ball on its way. It's right through the middle. Sandringham kicking a goal after two and a half minutes of play. And Port Melbourne on one point. Minutes into the game. And here's Cook going up for a mark right in the middle of the pack. And Cook has taken it. Now the, guy, the field umpire running right downfield. Cook right in front. I see uh, Jimmy Christo and Alfie Buse uh, having a bit of a tussle there behind the play as well. Uh, Righto uh, Don. Now here's Cook with a kick on its way. And he's put it through for full points. So that means Port Melbourne a 1-1. Leading Sandringham one goal. Well, we're back here, and after the bounce, Annenson gets a free kick in the middle of the pack. We'll have comments from this year's JJ Liston Trophy winner in Bill Thompson in just a few moments. Up to the forward zone, no one able to take the mark, but the umpire says yes, and he's quite right too. Rasmussen and Buse uh, having a bit of an argument down there, but the Sandringham player was pulled back when he was in the middle uh, of going up for that mark. It's Roberts Thompson, Thompson who's uh, got the free. And he hooks the ball out here towards the half-back line. And the Sandringham player, Gould, pretty well covered by Christo. Christo shoots it across towards Cook. He'd gone over, but uh, here's Clark coming in with it for Sandringham. He plays it up towards the wing. A big punch away to Wilkins. Wilkins couldn't handle the ball. And Greening runs over the line and out with it. Uh, all right, um, Let's have a comment from Bill Thompson, a very fast and furious opening, Bill. Yeah, this is a very lively opening. Both sides are looking good at the moment, and uh, Sandringham getting that goal there. I think there's an advantage down at Port's end, but uh, them getting that goal, it's worth two normally, and they're playing really well. So I think it'll be a very lively game. Right, now, Bill, and here's Don High. Right, Phil, Sandringham into attack again, and a rip-roaring start. Hutchison who kicked that goal a minute ago, a hand pass to Carroll. Carroll into an open goal. And the picture tells the story. Gee, Hutchison's moving well at full forward. Teddy took a ripper mark a while ago. He's kicked the goal, and he moved very well on that occasion to get the ball to Carroll. Yes, and he's going to open it right up there to take uh, Don because he's got plenty of pace. That was bad luck for Carroll, or not bad luck. It was bad play by Carroll. He had the goals right open in front of him then, but I'd say that uh, Hutchison's going to create some problems for Anderson, the fullback. A six-minute mark in the first quarter. There's the kick away by uh, Sid Anderson up towards the big fellow stretch. Anderson can't get the mark. Little Goss is there underneath all those players. 
and the umpire's going to bounce it up. Pledger uh, got a bit of a tap on the forehead then, to put it mildly. It's on the Sandringham half-forward line. Up is Anderson knocking the ball away from McNicholas. Picked up here by Goss. Goss on the half-back line, driving the ball into an attacking position for the uh, Port Melbourne side. Down here it's uh, uh, Thompson knocking the ball away for Sandringham, and the ball is out of bounds. On the half-forward flank position for the Port Melbourne team, with the scores level, both sides on one goal one, on compactus corner there, the brown belt side. A throw-in on that half-forward flank position, seven minutes gone in quarter number one. Ruck deal between 25, McNicholas and uh, Hainan. Neither player got it. The ball knocked away there by a player who got hit behind the play. Oh, that was a bad one, and uh, the umpire didn't even see it. And that Sandringham player still down there, Gould. He got a real uh, stiff arm. There's Sandringham coming into attack again. The ball kicked to the half-forward line. And an easy mark here, but I think it's a free kick uh, going to John Greening. Play on. Well, a confusing decision there. Picked up by Pledger. Pledger's hand pass is not good. He was trying to get it across there to Bell. Bell over the top of the ball. Held. We're not in possession. And we'll get the free kick. Eight minutes gone. Quarter number one in the big second semi-final. And... Uh, the uh, Sandringham player still uh, uh, getting attention down there. It's in front of the Sandringham goal. A free kick going Port Melbourne's way. It'll be taken in defence by Neville Stibbard. There's the Sandy player, Gould, who got that knock a minute ago. He's OK and back in play again. John Greening now in possession, and Greening plays the ball in towards Annanson, who uh, is in the back position, can't get the mark in. An opportunity for Hayden coming through hard, and glad I wasn't there. Kicked away by Gould under the half-forward line, not well directed. Stibbard's there again, defending well for Port. He plays it wide to the centre wing, taken over there by Bernie Evans. Evans a hand pass to Christo, twisting and weaving, he gets his kick now. Beautiful pass, and he finds Rasmussen. And a 15-metre penalty here with Rasmussen being put down after he marked it. It's against Coeli and the big fellow Annanson pushing him away and allowing Rasmussen to come closer to goal uh, within kicking distance and to take his kick. What a start. The scores are level. Both sides on one goal. One good kick. Great kick. Port Melbourne second goal. Two goals, one. Sandringham, 1-1. One, one. Well, what a great opening to this game down here today, Bill, with uh, both sides attacking very well, and uh, it's Sandringham showing a lot more pace than what I thought they'd show on this big ground. Yes, I, I, I agree with you there, Ted, but uh, I think with Cook, uh, the Gosses, not, the fellows in their forward line, they can all kick goals, and they just have to get one kick, just as Rasmussen proved then. He's just got to get a kick, and they'll really put it through. So, it's you know, I think that's what will end up counting for the day. Here we go again. The play getting underway again in the centre. Picked up by Hayden. He loses possession. Picked up here by uh, uh, Gould. He gets it to the uh, half-forward line. Taken in defence by Ian Owen. Good defence. He plays it wide to the centre wing. Beautiful pass. And Evans is there. A hand pass by Evans to Buster Harland. Harland now. A long kick down towards Freddie Cook at full forward. Port into attack. Cook is up. What a mark. Fabulous mark. And Not I know that I advocate uh, Blues, Don, but uh, I reckon there might be one or two here today. Yes, I think so. Let's watch it on slow-mo replay. What a mark. What's He's judgment. taking the ball from Fred Cook, I think, because Fred Cook actually hit Buse with the ball then. And that's what I think will happen. He's taken the ball off Cook. Yeah, because Freddie Cook uh, gave Buse a backhander. I notice also, uh, Ted, that the uh, Port uh, players around Cook are protecting him to a man today, making sure that he's looked after. They have memories from previous finals. OK, there's the ball after a controversial uh, piece of play into the centre. Big McNicholas is there, but the mark is taken by Bernie Evans. Would you like to comment, uh, Bill Thompson, when uh, Ted said memories from previous finals? Oh, no, I won't comment on that at all. <laughs> there's the ball in towards the full forward zone, and the big fellow Annans in there. He can't take it. Kicked away defensively. Straight to Wilkins. Wilkins now, one of the great players in VFA this year. Gives it across to Lyons. Lyons to the centre wing. Up is Greening. Can't hold the mark. It's on the centre wing. It's a battle royal here at the Junction Oval. And the ball is out of bounds in the second semi-final with Port Melbourne in front. 2-1-13 and Sandringham 1-1-7. Suggest if you're in the vicinity of the ground, get down here. There's a bit of space here still, and it's a ripper game here at the Junction Oval. On the half-forward line now for Sandringham. Coming in a defence is Beecroft. Beecroft to Port Melbourne, a long kick. In towards the full forwards, and Cook is in the back position. He seemed to push Buse out there, and has given a free kick away. I've never seen Fred Cook so aggressive early in a match. No, there's going to be a great tactical battle between these two also. Well, he didn't get any votes when he played um, top line. He might have taken your advice from the carbine luncheon the other day, Phil. 
I didn't uh, say anything. OK, it's on the flank position here. Picked up now and sent forward uh, for Sandringham. Up towards Hutchison, who took that great mark a while ago. Hutchison loses possession. Wilkins is there. He's bundled to the ground. May get the free kick. Ten minutes gone in the first quarter, and here's Philip Gibbs. Right, Don, and away we go again from that left half forward flank. Wilkins now, who will be the driving force in the Sandringham side for today, plays it right in front of goals. Up they go, and they spoil themselves, the Sandringham player. Here's Greening, long striding up the field, gets it up towards Rasmussen, who's given a bit of a shove in the back. In came Sammy Holt as well. But look at the Sandringham boys going for the ball, and it's Coelli. Rod Coelli who comes out. The victor, he plays it out towards the flank and moving up here to take a good mark. In front of the uh, player's race was Bell. Bell sends it straight down to full forward and Hutchison is the player to take the mark 20 metres out from goal directly in front. What a great game for the uh, second semi-final. Still room here if you'd like to come along and have a good look at it. Be a fantastic match before it's over today. He's kicked one, uh, Hutchison puts the ball on its way for another one, I think. Goal umpire says another goal, and again, the scores are even. Ball away from the centre, gets it up towards the half-forward line, a kick off the ground by Critch. He gets it up towards that forward zone. Buse comes in to defend, and Buse plays it around the half-back line. This is danger for the uh, Sandringham side. Can they get it away? Stacks on the mill, the umpire blows the whistle, and he's decided to come in and ball it up. Well, there's the uh, coach of Sandringham. Should be reasonably satisfied at this stage. Here we go once again. Goes out towards the boundary line, over and out. Sounds like CB. Anyway, 13 minutes into the quarter, the first quarter. Both sides on 13 points each. Two goals, one. Fantastic start to a big game here today. Lions taking the ball away from the pack. Lions up towards the half-forward line. And up goes Rasmussen. Arvinoff, rather, to pull in the mark. Yarraville are two goals, and Morty Alec yet to score in the grand final over there. We must have awarded a free here. It's taken by Greening. Greening plays it up towards the half-forward line. And a good pass there. Gets it up easily to Rob Critch. Critch from out on the half-forward line. Left foots it across towards that right forward pocket. Up they fly for it there. Nobody able to get possession. Look at them go in again, and the umpire will ball it up, I'd say. Now he's picked a free kick out of it. Sandringham's way. And it looks as though it is Thompson to take the kick onto the wing. Owen waiting underneath the ball, and so also is Carroll of Sandringham. But no one getting the advance, uh, uh, the uh, advantage of the ball. And it's gone out to Lyon. He puts it across to Carroll. Carroll can't get away it. It comes back to O'Brien again. O'Brien to Wilkins. Wilkins bangs it to home. Look at the big fellows come in here, and a good man to be taken by Beecroft of Port Melbourne. He's a very strong defender, this fellow. Reminds me of Bill Thompson a bit. There it comes onto the wing with Edwards take, Evans taking it, and Evans of Port Melbourne progresses it further downfield. Clark tries to get it. He'll be tackled here, but it comes through to Critch. Critch with a hand pass up here to Christo. Christo dodging, gets a cross to get a further hand pass in. Sammy Holt gets a push in the back. Holt back out today after broken ribs. Hey, look at them carrying on down here. If they all uh, smack right in the mouth there. Well, if they keep going, he'll be streaking down the field any tick of the clock. <laughs> Player underneath them was Gould. Bit of attention being handed out here today as Holt now gets ready for his kick. Second division grand final. Yarraville two goals. Morty Alec one point. There's the kick on its way. Cook goes back. No one able to take the mark. This allows the freedom of the back men of the... Uh, the Sandringham side, and there's Pledger getting it away towards the half-back line, and Edwards is the player to come in and take the mark. Edwards of uh, the Sandringham side, up to Wilkins, who's playing the loose man right across that centre. He's the driving force, gets it up to Bell, and Bell with a further hand pass. Here's a show now for Sandringham as Carroll shoots the goal, and it's through. Sandringham have hit the front. They're three goals, one to Port Melbourne's, two goals, one. All right, let's have uh, a replay. Let's see the action here. Bill Thompson, comments about the play so far. Well, they're not picking up their men, Port, and their forward, the Sandringham's forward line seem to be running wild, whereas uh, Sandringham are really putting pressure on our uh, Port Melbourne's forwards. They're knocking them around, they're making them earn every kick, but uh, the other way, they're just letting them run loose. They'll you know have to what tighten I up. happening? There are too many Port Melbourne players down in the forward zone and not giving Cook enough freedom. Yes, that, that's true too, Phil. Probably yeah. too many in there to protect him. 
All right, uh, at this stage, let's take you over to Don Nahai. Sandringham looking good here. 3-1 to Port Melbourne, 2-1. And his port into attack now through Bernie Evans. Evans into the full forward zone. Cook is there. Two bites of the cherry. Knocked away by Alfie Buse. Picked up here uh, by Gould. Gould, a defensive kick out to the flank. And it's over the line there. News at six every night on Channel O. 16 minutes gone, quarter number one. One goal in front, the Sandringham side. Taken here by Holt. Holt, the half-forward flanker, kicks it in towards the full forwards, and Cook is there. Cook uh, dealt pretty harshly with, but no free kick, and it's out of bounds in the forward pocket. Well, no wonder they didn't give Fred Cook a uh, vote in the Liston Trophy. He doesn't get enough attention, does he? Right, play uh, getting underway again, and a uh, pretty uh, big bunch of players here. And a free kick going Sandringham's way. It looks like it's going to be taken by Gould. He got a very hard knock early in the game and is OK now. A pretty fast and furious uh, battle here at the uh, Junction Oval. And uh, I suggest uh, you come along if you're looking for a great game of football. It's a tremendous match. One goal in front, Sandringham, as the ball is taken over there by Critch. The ball knocked away from him and out of bounds on the half-forward line for Port Melbourne, the Port Melbourne side, who are 2-1 and Sandringham 3-1. Up they go. Allenson doesn't get it on that occasion, but the ball comes down to Critch. Critch gets his kick in towards Cook again. A two-out battle here. The ball across towards Cook, who's getting plenty of attention this time around the neck. Or is it through for a point? Or is he getting the free? No, he One wouldn't behind. get the free. They wouldn't give him the free, Don. On behind. You're in a stirring type of mood today, aren't you? I'm not in a stirring mood at all. I'm trying to umpire the game. <laughs> There's the kick away by the fullback Buse up towards the half back line. Good mark up here. Uh, taken by uh, Kuali, but there's a free kick going Port Melbourne's way. And we're waiting on the uh, kick to be taken. Looks like uh, Rasmussen in towards goal. Not quite uh, far enough and through for one point to the Port Melbourne team. Point. Now, Bill, the way that uh, Cook and uh, Buse are playing down there, I notice Cook, he's staying in that goal square all the time. In other words, he stereotyped his game. If I was Cook, I'd be inclining to lead a few times to take Buse out. Yeah, well, he should be leading because he's, they're both about the same height if Buse is not a bit taller than him. So it's no use playing, you know, body sort of game. He's got to get out there, do a little bit of leading and get him stirred up a bit and make him lose. OK, here we go again on Port Melbourne's half-forward line, picked up by Anderson. Anderson hand pass away, looking for Critch. Critch over the ball, gets caught. Seemed to be throwing the ball there. Now that the umpire makes a decision, but he indicates around the neck to be taken by Critch. The Port Melbourne player who's on the half-forward line, a little pass set a half-forward within kicking distance. And it's four points of difference at the moment. Sandringham uh, in front, in towards goal. He's already kicked a point. What is it? Is it behind the line or is it a mark in front? Maybe it's a goal. Consultation here. Yes. A goal to Port Melbourne kicked by Critch. They move on to three goals, three, and Sandringham, 3-1. 20 minutes gone in the first quarter, and Port Melbourne have regained the lead by two points. Three goals, three to 3-1. Three, kick by Greening. Well, now a halt has given away a free kick there, but the umpire didn't see it. Uh, against uh, Clark, he gets a hand pass across to uh, Anderson. Anderson uh, interfered with as he was kicking. The umpire says uh, after he kicked it, a controversial decision, but a free kick downfield to be taken by Port Melbourne's Hayden. Hayden on the centre half forward position for the Port Melbourne team and within kicking distance because he's normally a good kick. This will be his first kick for the match. There's the kick. Won't quite make the distance. I'd have played the Sandringham mark there to Buse, but play on, says the umpire. Picked up by Rasmussen over his head. One point. Three goals four to three goals one. Rasmussen has kicked one goal three. We're 21 minutes into quarter number one. Half Buse about to put the ball back into play. And here's Philip Gibbs. Right, Don. Buse and Cook having quite a battle down there. Cook taking his time and getting the ball to throw it back to Buse. And Buse saying, well, take your time as long as you like. I'll wait. Port Melbourne 3-4, 22. Sandringham 3-1, 19. Terrific game so far in the second semi-final. Here it goes on its way towards the half-back line on the outer side of the ground. They rise high for it. And the big fellow Coelli, Rod Coelli, coming in of Sandringham to take the mark. He goes straight for the centre, hoping Wilkins will be there, but it's punched away. Here's the opportunity for Sandringham to get it away. Wilkins fell down in front of his own player. Owen's got the ball. He gets it out here towards Greening. Greening is on the ground. Look at them go at, uh, like a dog and a cat. 
Then it was uh, Carroll who was underneath them, but Greening gets the free kick. There's the Yarraville Mordialic game, second division, 3 1 Yarraville, Mordialic 1 1. Goss getting around the pack, look at them throw themselves in, and Gould must get the free, I reckon. No, it goes back to the big fellow here in Coeli. Coeli wide of the centre, and that'll be a mark taken out there by O'Brien. O'Brien downfield towards the centre half forward position. Up they fly for it. Hutchison goes up, he couldn't take the mark, and there's an elbow, goes into Ivanoff, and he'll get the free kick. Ivanov looking for the player running past, decides it's uh, better judgment to get up and take the kick. He plays it out towards the wing, he's dropped it a bit short. Oh, and I was going to say it must be a Sandringham mark to Edwards, but it gets to Christo eventually, and Christo up towards that forward line. Holt is the player in possession, can he break away? Held, we're not in possession and must get a free. Oh, <laughs> nearly happened, Ted. It certainly did happen, and uh, David Holt, uh, I think better off just go back and take a kick. That's exactly what he's doing. Hayden out here, but he's put it up towards Cook, who let out too far then. And what's happened? Has he given the free? Or has it gone over the line? It will be a throw in. Here's Hayden going up in the ruck against his uh, opposite number in Lorb. And there's a point touched as it went for goal, and that takes Port Melbourne onto three goals, five, and Sandringham, three, one. We must congratulate Jack Young on the ground here today. He does a magnificent job. He said he woke up at a quarter past 11. It was raining cats and dogs down here until midnight last night. He was reading a book and his wife wouldn't let him out of bed. But uh, Jack, an excellent job again. The ground looks in great condition. All right, it comes to the half-back line on the other side of the ground, and taking the mark here was um, Rasmussen, of Port Melbourne. He's dominating that centre half forward position at the moment, Phil. Yes, he is. He's moving around well and they're looking for him all the time. He's, he's doing a great job. He's as picked half, about one four, I think. As a half back man, what would you do with him? I just played a bit tighter. Right, oh, there goes the ball on its way offline and through for another minor score to the Port Melbourne score. They move on to three goals, six, and Sandringham, three one. Now let's have a look at this uh, slow mo uh, replay. Beautiful mark then by Rasmussen. Pulled it down with the one hand. What do you mean when you'd say you'd uh, play it tighter, you'd stick well, closer to him, would you? Yeah, that, yeah right, right beside him. I wouldn't give him one inch. They, they seem to be letting him run a bit wild. He's at, at standing on his own there now, and uh, we'd have to get close. What a beautiful mark taken out here by Robert Critch. It was a good pass from Buse, really, to him. But Critch now from centre half forward goes for the short pass to Holt and Holt. Only 25 metres out from goal on a very slight angle. Has every opportunity of kicking one here. And there's the AIU insurance uh, score up there of 3-6 to Port Melbourne. Sandringham 3-1 and right through now. And that takes Port Melbourne under 4-6 is against three goals one attack again and here's Don High. 26 minutes gone on the first quarter and Port Melbourne 30 leading Sandringham 19. Jimmy Christo on centre field and an opportunity to score. One of the smallest players in the game, the Port Melbourne Rover. There's his kick. Off line, swinging away. Up they fly and knocked away by Edwards and through for a point. And it's Port Melbourne now 4 7 31, Sandringham 3 1 19. And Port Melbourne now seem to have regained the composure, Ted, that they lacked earlier. Well, that's right, because uh, Sandringham got off to a very quick start. And I think they upset the uh, equilibrium of Port players for a while. Well, that's a kick away by uh, Lyons, who uh, he got uh, dealt with. Uh, no, the kick, uh, the kick went over the line of the full, obviously, and the free kick is going to uh, Goss. Goss now at Port Melbourne, in towards Cook. Cook not marking it there, as you can see, and uh, through for yet another point. Port Melbourne certainly getting the ball forward now, and Sandringham uh, defence under uh, plenty of pressure. Yes, but they want to be starting to kick goals, Don. The four goals, though, it's not a bad lead, but they've got the use of this breeze in this first quarter, and Sandringham will have use of it in the second. I feel that probably their bad kicking for goal is their only uh, failure so far in this game. There's a the kick-off by Buse, the fullback for Sandringham. Uh, Big Amundsen's there, so is McNicholas. Now, what's the decision going to be? I think McNicholas may get the kick. Up, uh, uh, Thompson it is. Uh, Number 22 in the picture now for the Sandringham team, and he's on the halfback flank, and he swings play with his kick to the half forward line. There's McNicholas now. The ball knocked away by Ian Owen. It's picked up by Critch doing well. Critch gets it across to Evans. Evans of Port Melbourne down to the half forward line. Evanson is there to take the mark. A hand pass to uh, Goss. Goss with a uh, good play in towards Cook. 
Has he been given the mark, or didn't he hold it long enough? One point. Well, I've seen them paid for that before. No, that was fair enough, Don. Well, you've changed oh. your mind very quickly. <laughs> no, but he didn't get a push in the back, and he didn't mark the ball. OK, comments there from Philip Gibbs. There's the kick away by Alf Buse, a long kick up to the half-back line. Sandringham players are spoiling themselves there, as we see it eventually shot forward for Sandringham. But in defence here for Port Melbourne, it's Ivanoff. Ivanoff kicking it back to the half-forward line, but straight into the hands of Wilkins. Wilkins, the uh, star of the Sandringham team this year, he's had a magnificent season, putting his side into attack to the half-forward line. Take your pick. Carroll it is, the man in front, but over the top, he's paying it to the other Sandringham player. Quite right. Well, it's Lord who's getting it, and uh, Lord kicks it to the full forward zone. Hutchison may get the free. And yeah, Hutchison... put an elbow in, an elbow went into him there, Don. Oh, thank you, Phil. I noticed that uh, Sid Anderson uh, seems to uh, be psyched a little by Hutchison at the moment. Ian Hutchison doing very well. There's a pretty good kick. Yes, that's his third goal, and Sandringham 4-1-25, Port Melbourne 4-9-33. 33, Sandringham 25, Port Melbourne into attack through uh, John Greening. Greening kicking it to the half-forward line. Good mark. Christo coming into his own now in the first quarter. He worked well for that, Bill Thompson. Yes, he did. He, he really used his body well, and he's taken a couple of good marks like that. Jimmy Christo, the Port Melbourne Rover on the half-forward flank. Port Melbourne lead 33-25. to 25. Their kicking for goal hasn't been quite good enough. 4-9 is not good enough, particularly kicking with the wind. As Christo's kick, a long raking kick, it swings in towards the point post, getting up high as Buse to knock it away, and it goes through for yet another point. Port Melbourne frittering away opportunities with an accurate kicking. They're 4-10 and Sandringham 4-1. Getting close to the uh, quarter time break. They kick off again by uh, Buse, the fullback. He's not kicking off well in the last 10 minutes or so. And we see Goss getting it over there, then losing possession uh, to Evans. Evans a hand pass to Adamson. Adamson decides to left foot kick it himself into the full forward zone. Up they fly here. <laughs> Well, how do you describe a mark like that? The mark of a champion, nothing else. Here, watch this. Fred Cook. Fabulous Freddy. Well, that's the where... The tells the story there, Don. He took the words out of my mouth, Ted. The picture tells the story. And Fred Cook has already kicked one. There's his kick. Oh, off line a little. I think he's missed it. And that's a bad miss. Well, you know, uh, I think uh, a miss like that, Ted, from right in front, uh, takes a little bit of the uh, the excitement off the great mark that he pulled down. Yes, and also the fact that he's been a little bit frustrated, I feel, down there by Alf Buse, the fullback for Sandringham, and uh, I think he's worrying Fred Cook a little bit, and I think that could have even uh, come into his kicking then, that shot for goal, I think, probably in the back of his mind, being frustrated down on the forward line. OK, here we go with Buse taking the kickoff, and he puts it right into the pack on the half-back line. Wilkinson scouting around, but he misses the run of it. Rasmussen gets it. Hand pass over here. Goes to um, Harland. Harland to Holt. Holt screws it in towards goal. Is it across the face? Yes. And one point only. Well, look at the minor score is that Port Melbourne are putting up. They've got 4-12 on the board to Sandringham's four goals one. Now, if they get beaten in this uh, match, Port Melbourne, they can only blame themselves. And also the defence of Sandringham, oh, I feel yeah, that they're, they're pressing him pretty hotly down there, Phil. Yes, maybe I put it around the wrong way, because when you think back, it is the defence of Sandringham. Uh, Bill Thompson, Liston Trophy winner. Yes, a lot of those have been, points have been rushed through. They've been knocked through by the Sandy players themselves. They're really putting pressure on. They're hitting them hard every time the port base get them, and they're, they're making it hard and frustrating them a little bit. Well, they got Cookie upset a bit by the look of it. There it comes the half-back line, goes to Sammy Holt. He passes it wide, push further afield, and here's little Goss running in. Goss lines him up up and off line. He's hit the post with it. So that puts Port Melbourne on a 4-13. To 4-1. Well, not all of those have been rushed through. That's uh, not good play on my part. 32 minutes this quarter. Immediately we uh, finish here. We'll take you over for a quick word uh, from the grand final match over there in uh, Turak Park. Here we go, and it comes down into the hands of Ivanov. It gets pulled around the neck, and he'll get the free kick. Some people yelling out for holding the ball, but he got a definite yank around the neck. 
And you know what a yank around the next like. And there's a bit of a blue going on, too, on the outer side there. But uh, it was just in the background of that shot. So Wilkins goes on the mark, and Ivanov gets closer to goal. Ivanov moves in, puts the ball on its way, and again it's offline. Another point to take Port Melbourne on to 4-14, Sandringham four goals, one. Well, Bill, uh, you can't say it's all pressure that's doing that. Oh, not, not all pressure, no, no. They, there's been those few rush, but I, I think it's just they're playing hard and they're getting a little bit frustrated down there because they're not kicking goals and this is putting them off a bit and they're just... Uh, I think they'll improve. Righto, here we go. It's on the uh, outer side of the ground. And again, Port Melbourne through Harlan, trying to pick up the ball. He got a hand pass it in towards Rasmussen, tried to run through the pack. And there's the siren to end the first quarter. Port Melbourne, 4-14 to Sandringham's four goals, one. Quick comment now from Don High. Port Melbourne should have kicked better. They've kicked 4-14, not quite good enough with the wind. It'll make it uh, prove costly to Port Melbourne in the final quarter. Right, Ted Henrys. A great opening to the game, Phil, the second semi-final. Sandringham open very well with Hutchison dominating at full forward. Port Melbourne definitely frustrated in their forward line. We'll have to settle down there if they're going to take this game out. Well, I'm positive that the Sandringham side will do much better in the second quarter. They're playing very, very well and, as I said, keeping the forward line of um, Port Melbourne open. Right, here's um, Bill Thompson. I'm playing 30 minutes in the first quarter. Bounce of the ball coming up down here at the uh, Junction Oval. Umpire Marcy goes in and away we go for the second quarter. Knockout then from Anderson to Goss. It bounces over players' heads. Rasmussen with a hand pass to Critch. Crit Harland. Harland on his way. And he's put it through for another goal to Port Melbourne. Within 10 seconds of the start of play. So that was his first. Port Melbourne 5-14. Sandringham, four goals won. Here's a replay of that 10-second thrust forward by Port Melbourne. It comes over, then ends up with um, Harlan, and right on the 10-second mark, straight through for another goal. So here we have the field umpire Marcy in possession of the ball once again. This is a direct telecast from Channel O in Melbourne, live on VFA Football. Don't forget news at six every night on O, as the ball is bounced once again. A nice punch away there by McNicholas. Punched back by Owen. Into the hands of Goss. Goss this time across to Critch. Critch downfield, a high one. Who can mark it? The man in front. I'll give it to Gould. So Gould on the half back line now. Plays it out towards the wing on the outer side of the ground. Lyons is the player to move downfield to take the mark. Starting to get a bit of system back into their play, um, the Sandringham side. Forced down to the ground. Here's the big opportunity now for Carroll to get it up forward on the half-forward line. Kicked up towards the centre-forward zone. It was Pledger putting it up towards centre-forward. A free kick has to be awarded to Hutchison down here. Well, you saw it all. Hutchison. He's kicked three. So it gives you an indication of the job he's doing for Sandringham. They're 4-1. as against Port Melbourne's 5-14. He's had three kicks, three goals. He's had four kicks and four goals. So that takes Sandringham to 5-1, Port Melbourne 5-14. Right, umpire Marcy uh, coming across now for the bounce of the ball. And no one gaining the knockout, really. But here goes Wilkins away. He's the uh, centre of attraction here with his beautiful play from the centre. He gets it across to Carroll. Carroll shoots for goal. And it's through for another one to Sandringham. They're firing. They move on to 6-1, uh, 37 to Port Melbourne's 5-14-44. Well, you watch uh, this beautiful move by Wilkins. No one gets the advantage there. Wilkins coming right through the pack. Gets that one bounce in, passes to Carroll, and then Carroll will uh, come in, line them up on its way. Just makes it, but gets it through. Good play by Sandringham. They're now 6-1, 37 to Port Melbourne's 5-14. Uh, quick comment here from Bill Thompson. Yes, they're moving the ball well now. They've got the advantage of this win. If they can kick a couple more, they'll put the pressure right on the port. Right, well, uh, that was two uh, Port Melbourne players spoiling one another. Edwards gets it up to Wilkins, and Wilkins, who's really burning, takes the mark on the stand wing. He kicks it high in the air to give the forwards a chance. They've got big men down there. No one able to take the mark in the port. Little men get it away. It's knocked out, thrown out. No, he is pushed in the back, says the umpire. It was thrown out, actually, uh, by Anderson of Port Melbourne. But the free kick is being taken by Greening. Greening gets a lead from Sam Holt. Holt under pressure, gets a smack in the air to go on with against Carroll. Carroll tried again. 
But Holt's uh, been around, he told him where to go, and then kicks the ball up towards the wing on the stand side of the ground. Here's Evans moving into it, he'll put it right down uh, field, up to Hainan. Hainan failed to take the mark there, and this allows Buse to come in. Buse goes down to the ground, he uh, got injured just before quarter time, but it's forced over the line and out of bounds. Port Melbourne supporters saying it was a push in the back. But it's on the forward line for Port Melbourne. They've been playing four and a three or four and a quarter minutes into the second quarter. Comes out a little Goss. Goss has got a bit of toe. Hand passes here. Gets it across to Buster Harlan who puts it up the forward zone. And Buse is the player who dropped back pretty quickly to take the mark in defence. Look at it back here. Oh. And the player being grabbed there is Big McNicholas. He's in the middle of one, two, three Port Melbourne players and he's having a go at Anderson again. Hamilton uh, got what I call a gutter perform, and down goes the umpire. That was the boundary umpire who went down. And there's Cookie up there trying to quieten the players down. And the uh, boundary umpire holding his knee, testing his knee out. Now he knows what it's like to get into the play. Merchants umpire Rex Wen came upfield, president of the Umpires Association. And the emergency goal umpire came in to have a goal. There'll be more umpires on the ground in a minute than players. Here's Don High. Well, an exciting passage of play. There are umpires running everywhere. There it's, here's the replay on here. You can see McNicholas, number 25 there, and uh, there's Goss. I tell you what, I've never seen so many white-coated attendants. Crazy sort of a game. The ball back near the centre now as play gets underway again and here's Ivanov. Ivanov coming through hard, gets his kick downfield and the ball is taken by Rasmussen. A high kick by Rasmussen. In towards Fred Cook. Buse is there. Buse is mark. Good mark. A pressure mark. And Sandringham 37, trailing Port Melbourne 44. Up they go again. It's on Port's half uh, forward line here. No game for weak hearts out there. They're going in pretty hard. Number seven is Coelli. There's Holt uh, walking past, uh, not showing much uh, on top. I didn't mean in top, I meant on the top of his head. He's a nice fella. Nice fella. Ruck deal here. Number 14 is Anderson, 25 McNicholas. They're still at each other, jostling each other here. And that's a free kick to Anderson. Perhaps a little bit hard there on uh, McNicholas. Two of the giants of the game in terms of stature having plenty to say to each other today. There's Anderson's kick in towards Fred Cook. Oh, good mark. And Buse takes the mark. And uh, got a knock in the face as well. Uncalled for. Oh, I hope we've got a replay of that That's one. That's a tough Look game. <laughs> open hand, though. It was an open hand, Don. An open hand, only a friendly tap. 37 to 44. A game packed full of incident here. In the second semi-final, 44 to 37, and Port Melbourne lead by seven points. Up to the centre. And a handball uh, coming across here towards uh, Wally. Wally gets it across to Bell. Bell to the half-forward line, putting uh, Sandringham into attack. Taken by Pledger. A high kick into the air, into the full forward zone. Two Sandringham, uh, two Port players spoil each other. Over the top of the ball, a lot of players, and it's a baller. There you know, and holding the... Um, Sandringham player getting to his feet there in uh, Welly. And it's a ball up again. Right on the Sandringham centre half forward position. Up goes McNicholas. Knocks the ball down here towards Pledger. He can't get it. Around the neck is the call. And the free kick will go to Stivard, the very reliable defender for the Port Melbourne team. Port Melbourne lead 5-14. Bad kicking though for goal. 5-14-44 to Sandringham 6-1-37. Critchett is now, who's got the ball, and Port Melbourne coming around the ground again. Harlan's on his own, bad defence here, to allow him to be unattended. He plays it with not a good kick to the half-forward line. Hainan's there, he's being bustled, and the ball is over the line. A fast and furious game, and that'll be the Port Melbourne Hill over there, I'd suggest. All the Port Melbourne supporters gathered on the outer side in front of the Dandy Dollar sign. Up they go, knocked down by McNicholas, a great punch. But it goes up to the centre wing, taken here by uh, Goss. Goss kicks it into the full forward zone. Rasmussen. Well, he's been a very uh, damaging player on that half forward line. He's an amazing mark for his height, Don. Kick into the full forward zone, up is Edwards. The ball through, and it's one point to the Port Melbourne team. They add to the tally of points. They go to 5-15 and Sandringham 6-1.
Just notice the anti-dandruff uh, broad cream sign come up. We'll take that out to hold him. <laughs> yes, I think it's a bit late for Sam. Not late for any of us, though. There's the ball in towards the uh, centre. Uh, up they go, knocked away by Greening. It comes back in here towards Lord. Lord knocks it down here towards Pledger. Pledger now steadies. A short pass towards Marty Lyons. He can't take it. Stibbard's here. Good play. And a free kick around the neck. Well, that's a second around the neck uh, that Stibbard's had in the first, uh, in the last five minutes. Now he puts it onto the Port Melbourne half-forward line. Up they go, the Sandringham defenders, to knock the ball away. Out to the centre wing. An opportunity for Carroll. And here's... Uh, a promising move by Sandringham as Carroll comes around the flank. A short pass to Bell. And the Port Melbourne defence very loose on that occasion. Yarraville 32 and Morty Alec 35 in the second division grand final VFA. This is the second semi-final first division VFA football from the Junction Oval coming to you live on Channel O as we watch Bell kick in towards goal. A wobbly sort of a kick, but he's put it through. One point. Well, I did say, Teddy put it through for one point, didn't I? Bill Thompson. I think they hit the post that time, didn't they? It was definitely touched anyway, Bill. Oh, it's definitely touched, yeah, yeah. OK, so. it's Port Melbourne 45 and Sandringham uh, 38. We move to the 10-minute uh, mark in quarter number two, and here's Philip Gibbs. Right, Don, and it comes up towards the half-back line. Uh, here's Owen playing it up towards Holt. Holt comes in from behind. Down goes the Sandringham player. Christo picks it up. He gets his kick in. Up towards Cook. Cook moves out with Buse. Hand pass from Cook to Evans. Evans lines it up and straight through the middle. So Port Melbourne goes on to 6-15-51. Sandringham 6-2-38 he gets it wide. Wilkins coming around, isn't it? Yes, and Wilkins with the left foot up towards the half-forward line. Moving in after it here is Ivanov. Ivanov's nicking off. No, he got it in the back, and it comes down this time to be taken away by Wally. Wally of Sandringham up towards the forward zone. Hutchison marking very strongly. He's played well. Five goals out of five kicks and five shots. Four goals out of five kicks. You got it right, Bill? No, I haven't. It's four goals out of four kicks. There he goes on its way, and it'll land over near the big sticks. Up they fly, and we'll pay that to Greening. Greening of Port Melbourne taking the mark. Port Melbourne 6 15, 51. Sandringham 6 2, 38. So now we have the kickoff being uh, taken by uh, Greening. Not a kickoff, it's from the uh, mark, and it goes out here to be marked by Stibbard. Critch it is. Critch now towards the wing on the other side of the ground. Up they fly for it. And here's a race for the ball moving in. Here is Buster Harland. Harland gets it further down. Field to Holt. Holt stood his ground and took the mark. Passes back here to Goss. Goss in turn high in the air looking for Cook. Will he make it? No. The uh, Sandringham players go up in the air. Look at them going for the ball. Cook comes in over the top of it. Pulls the leg of his opponent. And the umpire says it will be a ball up. I'll tell you what, a squirrel ran out of there too, Don. Yes, everyone saw that. Right, now here's the chance. Hayden gets the ball, bangs a goal. How much he done? Another minor score on the board. That takes Port Melbourne to 6-16, 52, to Sandringham, 6-2, 38. We're at the 13-minute mark. And it's Alf Buse. About to come out with the kick. Morty Alec are three points in front in the grand final over at Turak Park in Paran. Up they go, Evans gets in front, has it punched away, but it comes out here to be taken off now by uh, Christo. Christo down towards the forward zone, looking for Cook again. Cook goes in, but a free kick will be awarded against him. And quite right. Alf Buse with that right thigh bandage too, I noticed. Just coming down from the next the bandage. Here's the kick on its way towards the uh, half-back line. Comes through to be taken away by Wilkins, who under pressure gets a hand pass in. There's Sammy Holt coming in, but here it goes from the centre. Bell uh, sends it up here towards Lyons. Lyons with a hand pass back to Bell, and Bell's moving right downfield. Takes the shot for goal. Oh, this is dangerous. Can he get it through? And it's McNicholas who puts it on its way and puts it through for full points. So Sandringham go to 7-2. That's 44. Port 6-16, 52. Right, umpire uh, Graham Marcy coming in for the bounce of the ball, looking across there at the wall, Pimua sign. That's where Freddie Cook works, as a matter of fact. All right, it comes into Wilkinson again in the centre, and Wilkinson takes the bounce, sends it out towards the left forward pocket. McNicholas moving towards the ball, but it's over the line. Pushed over there by Anderson of Port Melbourne. They're looking good, Sandringham, Ted. 
Well, they certainly are looking good, Phil, and uh, unfortunately, Port Melbourne kicking bad. Uh, 22 scoring shots to nine. Bill Thompson. Yes, San Diego is starting to get a bit of system into their game. They're playing really well at the moment, and uh, Port seem to be getting a bit frustrated. Flicky's getting blanketed out, and they're starting to panic a little bit, I think, but uh, they're still going... Well, look at the uh, Sandringham. Nine uh, shots for goal and Port Melbourne, although there haven't been all shots, they've been forced through. But they've got uh, 22 up there. All right, it comes up to Holt. Holt gets the lead here in the centre of the ground. Harland had the chance to get it. He's tapped it on beautifully. Under a lot of pressure, too, as Christo moves in. Allows Harland with Shepherding to come in. Go for the short pass. Looking for Cook again. And a beautiful mark by Buse. Good mark by Buse. He sends it up towards the uh, centre position. Up they fly for it. We'll play that. Christo. Christo marking well, just wide of the centre, gets away, tries the short pass, and a bad pass by Christo, went into the hands of Lobb, he sends it back wide, moving across here is O'Brien, and O'Brien of Sandringham a bit too fast for Goss, you wouldn't think he would be, but there's Goss coming into it, slung to the ground, we're not in possession. Should have been a free, it should have been holding the man, here it comes out wide, there's Allen coming through, trying to get possession of the ball, on the ground here, his Lions comes wide of the pack, and throwing himself into it was quick, she got the push, got it around the net, and he gets the free kick, here's Donald Hyde. Well, it's a hard game out there, and uh, that's certainly an understatement, I think, as we see Goss picking up the ball now, getting it to the half-forward line, beautiful pass, and he finds Rasmussen, who will get the benefit of a 15-metre penalty, and he's playing a very damaging game across that half-forward line. And Yarraville in their game, a lead by three points at the moment. There's a big kick by Rasmussen. Cook is behind the pack. Knocked away here by uh, Thompson. And out of bounds in the uh, forward pocket for the Port Melbourne team, who leads 6-16-52 to Sandringham 7-2-44. Yarraville 44, Morty Alec 41, picked up by Anderson. A snapshot, he's hit the post. I noticed that Kennedy is about to come on in front of us here. The interchange player. He's a good quick player too, Don. Well, the uh, little players for Port are doing well, Ted, aren't they? Christo uh, doing well around the packs, and uh, so is Goss now starting to play well. There's Kennedy about to come on. As we watch, uh, Alf Buse is having a great battle with Fred Cook. Both players doing well. Kicking it down towards the halfback line. A big punch by Hayden. Will take the ball out of bounds. And it's on Port Melbourne's attacking zone on the half-forward flank. 53 to 44, that's a nine-point advantage to the Port Melbourne team who have kicked inaccurately in kicking 6-17. Annanson casually takes it out of the air to Evans. Evans to Harland. Harland on the half-forward line, under pressure now, gets his kick, a poor kick, straight into the hands of Gould. Gould, a bit of a soccer kick there to Wilkins. He fumbles, not like him. Evans is there, good play. Port Melbourne Shorer in their ball handling now. And the player Rasmus is slipping at the crucial moment. He's over the top of the ball again. So is Gould, and the ball is out of bounds. Because that's the practice wicket area there, Don, and that's where the turf would be slippery. A bit of Mary Creek soil there. The throw in. O'Brien right coming the... off the field for interchange. There's a shot in towards goal by Goss. Over the head of Cook, and another point. And Port Melbourne, if they lose this game today, can blame their poor kicking for goal. That's been said on many occasions in the past in all sorts of football matches. But gee, Port Melbourne have missed some easy shots. Six goals, 18 they've kicked to Sandringham, 7-2. And Port Melbourne lead by 10 points. Coelli, the ball comes towards Lord. And it's uh, holding the ball. The free kick here goes to Christo. Christo plays it in front of him. And he gets held. A free kick to Jimmy Christo. He's been one of the good players in the Port Melbourne team so far. Now looking at Buse the way he's uh, watching Fred Cook up there in front of goals, Don. Not allowing an inch of latitude. Well, he's playing very well. You know, Cook, a century goal kicker this year, needs to be watched, and uh, Buse is doing just that. A good kick, not quite accurate enough. Knocked away again from Cook, and out of bounds of the Port Melbourne forward pocket. A margin here, 10 points in favour of the Port Melbourne team. We move to the 20-minute uh, mark in the uh, second quarter, and here's Philip Gibbs. Right, Don, and here it comes back into play once again. Stretch Anderson going up, but it was knocked away from Lorb. Uh, Pledger goes over the ball, and it will be a ball up. I tell you what, they're playing Fred Cook well, the uh, Sandringham backman, Bill Thompson. Yeah, Elf Buse is using his body very well, and even when uh, Cook, he does get in position once he does use that body, the, someone else is coming over the top and punching it away all the time. They're not giving him one inch at all. Free kick to Lorb um, against Anderson. 
as we have it being played to the outer side of the ground. There's Gould moving into the ball, dodges cleverly, and then plays on. He's got a paddock to play in here. He can have two bounces. He can have the third, the fourth if he wants it. But he's got a lead, and he decides to put it across here towards centre-half forward. Trying to break away with it is uh, Franklin, I think. And it's Franklin who's on the ground, sends it up towards the forward pocket position. And there's a tap across by Owen, into the hands of Stibbard. Stibbard went for the hand pass, it goes to Carroll. Carroll with a further hand pass, and he gets it here to Franklin. Franklin down to the forward zone, and a beautiful mark. Beautiful pass, really. The credit is for the pass. And it's marked by McNicholas. McNicholas right in front of goal now. He's kicked one so far. And there you see uh, the score on the AIU in uh, Assurance board up there. It's uh, 6 18 to Port, 7 2. And now 8 2 to uh, Sandringham. They move to 50, four points behind Port Melbourne of 6 18 54. Right, uh, Holt just got a free kick right in the centre of the ground. Got ridden into the ground. He plays it out wide to Christo. Christo's got plenty of room to turn. And now we'll bang it up towards Fred Cook, who's making the lead, and he's marked. Now, this is both what uh, Ted and Bill said earlier. He's got a 15-metre penalty by the sound of the crowd. I didn't see what happened. Yes, he's... He came a mile over the mark, and now the umpire's brought him right in front of goal. Well, that's what he should be doing, Bill and Ted. Well, that's right. We did say this the first quarter, Bill, that he should be leading more. Yeah, he's just, just standing there trying to outmark him and outbustle him, which is no good because Buse has got the height and a bit more weight than him, I think. And uh, once he starts moving like this, well, he'll start picking a few. There's a difference. Right, there's yeah. a goal up to Port Melbourne. They move on to 7-18. That was Cook second with Sandringham eight goals too. Back here, and uh, here's um, Hutchison up in the ruck area now. Gets it down towards the forward zone. Greening looked a little bit slow in trying to move in for the ball then. Tried to break away with it, but Sandringham are too strong for them. But Stibbard, the ever-reliable, races through and turns defence into attack. But then he's put it right into the hands of Clark in the centre. Hutchison got a front behind the ear as he tried to come down the ground. And Hutchison will go back to take the free kick. They've moved Hutchison out to the half-forward line, Phil. Yeah, and he's getting right up near the centre a lot too. Well, he's a good mark, good player. And a, might, and a good kick, so he might liven up the play a bit. There it goes up towards the forward zone. Nearly a mark by Sandringham, but it'll be dribbled through for one point. No, it's taken away here by Owen. Owen onto the half-back line on the other side of the ground. Ivan off, not quick enough. Uh, yes, he's got it over the line, so it will be thrown back into play. As long as he doesn't nick off. Yeah. Oh, back at the play, it comes once again. Big McNicholas gets a hand pass out of the pack, gets it up here to Bell. And Bell now will put it on its way, but brings up one minor score. One point only, so that takes Sandringham onto eight goals, 3.51. Port Melbourne in this tremendous game here today, a 7.18, a total of 60. So to take the kick, we'll look down here and see it's Beecroft. And uh, Beecroft now... Coming out from the goal square, puts it well on its way with a beautiful kick, just wide of the centre. Up they fly, and Hainan is the big man to come in and take the mark. Very heady player, Hainan. He gets the lead and plays it out here towards the wing, but it'll be forced over the line by Gould with a little goss behind him for a throw in. On that Adidas wing there. Right, back into play comes once again the knockdown by uh, Hainan. That's a kick away here to see it go up towards centre-half forward, and that's Carroll to take the mark. He's playing a serviceable game, Carroll. And Carroll now gets his kick up towards the forward zone. Up they go for it. This is dangerous. Anderson comes in, plays it to centre-half back, and Owen has taken the mark. Owen went for the hand pass. He'll get caught if he doesn't hurry. There's Yarraville, 44, and Morty Alec getting away, 62. And the kick across the field from Critch and gets it here. Oh! Christo's mulled it. Christo then gets a short pass up towards Sammy Holt. Holt comes in. He gets a further hand pass. Back to Christo. Christo will line them up deliberately, put it on its way. And it's one point. Look at the score of Port Melbourne, will you? There's 7-19, 61 to Sandringham's 8-3, a total of 51. There it is. Oh, shocking kicking. Well, Fred Cook puts back a bit of toilet paper. And we have Buse coming out to take the kickoff. Here's Don Hyde. Right, I feel there's the ball to the half forward line. Uh, still uh, Port Melbourne uh, in attack. Uh, it's taken away here by Edwards. A bit slow in getting rid of it. Now the umpire indicating out of bounds, but before that happened, a free kick had been awarded to Harland. Now Harland putting Port into attack. Up uh, knocking the ball away was Thompson, taken by Hayden. Poor hand pass. Not good enough for an experienced player. He was looking for Sammy Holt. 
and it's out of bounds. 61 to 51, a 10 point advantage to Port Melbourne. They have the ball in attack at the moment on their half forward line, knocked down by Hayden. The chance here uh, for uh, Dennis Clark. Clark to the uh, Sandringham half forward line, knocked down by Amundsen. A chance for Carroll, he couldn't get it. Knocked away there by Bell, picked up here for the uh, Sandringham side by Pledger. Pledger into the forward pocket. Lord is there, knocked away by Sid Anderson. Anderson uh, picks it up now, gives it to Greening. Greening to Stebart, who's been a magnificent defender. He from the half back line puts it on the Port's half forward line. Hayden's up. No mark. Holt is there. Gives it to Rasmussen. A good player, Rasmussen. Into the full forward zone. And the mark is taken by Buse. Alfie Buse and Fred Cook having a magnificent battle in the Port Melbourne uh, attacking zone there. And Buse won out on that occasion. That's taken here by Ivanov. Ivanov a short pass to Rasmussen again. Rasmussen with a lot of pace. Gets a short kick away towards Hayden. Hayden dummies a hand pass. Now a deliberate shot. Offline. And out of bounds it goes in the Port Melbourne forward pocket. And Port Melbourne's kicking for goal has been atrocious. They've kicked 7 19 to 8 goals 3. Bill Thompson. Yes, the Port Melbourne are really drumming right at these goals at the moment, but they're just. They're not taking their time. They're just they're kind of rushing it all the time instead of, you know, playing properly and getting blokes running past and running into those goals. They're just banging away. They're not really getting a lot of system into their forward line. Well, there's the kick by Alf Buse now, the fullback. Upfield, McNicholas knocks it down, but it comes to Holt. Holt's kick is poor. It's taken away by Wilkins. And look at Wilkins go down the ground. Wilkins, a left foot kick now. Across to the half forward line for Sandringham. An opportunity for Bell. Bell shepherded here by Hutchison. Bell a deliberate shot in towards goal. Yes, it's true. Sandringham, 9-3, 57. One goal to him, and they're four points behind Port Melbourne. Oh, Port Melbourne lead by four points. Evans putting Port into attack. Cook, and I think, uh, well, he appeared to push Buse out. What did you think, uh, Ted? No way known. <laughs> that was a Fred Cook mark. What do you think, Bill Thompson? Yeah, I, he used his body well then. He read the ball better and uh, just our positioning. So, Don, you stick with the commentary. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Well, here's Fred Cook. Right in front of goal, and it's a pretty good kick. He's put it through. That's his third goal, and Port Melbourne, a quick reply to that last goal to Sandringham. They move on to, to 8 19 to 9 3. Well, Bill, that would give Fred a lot of confidence because no doubt about it, Abuse has been getting right on top of him. He has, yes. But we, uh, well, we watch the CUB slow mo replay of that one, and uh, that's Bernie Evans, Bill. Yes, Bernie Evans, he's playing really well too. He seems to give them that lift. He comes out of the centre quickly and that, that makes a bloke like Cookie where he can read the ball off there and he comes down so fast and he won't have those two or three attacking on him. The time gone in the second quarter is 28 and a half minutes and Port Melbourne lead by 10 points again. 67 to 57, taken in the centre by Kennedy. Kennedy puts Sandringham into attack. The ball to the full forward zone. Good mark by Beecroft. That's the second great mark of the match he's taken. He took a screamer in the first quarter and now on the full back line he plays it up towards Anderson on the half back line. The big fellow 14 gets up but can't quite judge it. Evans is there, knocks it away. Taken here on the centre wing by Critch. Critch to the half forward line and the ball is knocked away by Thompson of Sandringham. Out of bounds it goes between centre wing and the Port Melbourne half forward flank. Port Melbourne 8 19 67, Sandringham 9 3 57. McNicholas, Wilkins, Humbles, Goss into his back, and that's a free kick. Wilkins a hand pass now to Dennis Clark. Around the deck, but play on, and now Clark sends it in towards Hutchison, who's set to mark from behind. Can't quite get it. Beecroft appealing for it and, uh, and becoming a little frustrated there as uh, the ball is kicked out now towards Critch on his own. There's Evans downfield, making position. Port Melbourne using the loose man tactics well. Evans is there, but Gould makes up plenty of ground to get to Evans and bump him. I thought it was no more than a fair bump. Oh, I thought he got him just around on the back part, uh, Don. A uh, fair bump. All right, here we go. From the wing on the outer side of the ground. There it goes up towards the uh, centre forward zone. They rise high for it. And the fellow going up was Coelli to pull in the mark. Great mark by Coelli. Timely mark. Here we go with the kick on its way towards the wing on the outer side of the ground. And no one came up, failed to take the mark. And what Sandy move away with it. It comes eventually across here towards uh, Bell. Bell moving downfield, takes the shot. What is it? Offline. And out on the full. Port Melbourne were lucky then. Anderson will take the kick from that last line of defence and we're at the 31-minute mark. So, Sid Anderson. 
Anderson comes out now, plays it on the half-back line. Players set themselves here. Up they fly for it. And Anderson gets in the air to take the mark. But there was a push in the back. And the free kick will be taken by Sandringham. It will go to Hutchison. Hutchison's kicked four goals so far. Puts the ball on its way. It won't quite get the distance. But it'll be right up in the goal square. The big men fly for it. And it was Greening who was in there. This will be a free. No, the umpire's allowed the play to continue. He's got to get a free. Well, holding the ball. What do you think about that, Ed and Bill? It was a what I look up to you on that, I think. He, he was, was pushing it and he was over it, so I, I'd just let it go on. I wouldn't have uh, done anything there. But you're not the umpire, Bill. No, that's right. <laughs> All right. Down here on the half-forward line. And Sandringham into attack again. Lions it was, but not a bad kick, and I think it might be a goal. Yes, it is a goal. And Sandringham go to 10-3. Sandringham had the chance to hit the front. Mark taken down here by Carroll. He's well within scoring range for Sandringham. He's kicked two so far. And there you've got the time. Officially, we're at 32 and a half minutes into the second quarter. So here's Carroll lining them up pretty deliberately. Puts the ball on its way and the goal umpire moving across, but it's hit the post. So Sandringham go to 10-4, 64 to Port Melbourne's 8-19-67. Not a bad score, that. 10-4, Ted. That's a good score, Phil, and uh, Port Melbourne wish they could be as accurate as Sandringham. 10-4. Right, it goes to the half-back line on the other side of the ground. And George Allen is about to come on for Port Melbourne. There goes the siren. The ball's on its way. But we have the half-time score. Port Melbourne leading by only three points. They're eight goals, 19, 67 to Sandringham's 10-4, 64. Comments now from Don Hyde. Take the mark in defence. A good mark in his pumas. Puts it in towards the centre of the ground. Up they fly for it. And well played, Rasmussen. The umpire doesn't. So it comes out here towards Pledger. And Pledger pushing the ball along the ground. Here's the chance now for Edwards to move into it. Edwards takes it right downfield. Sharked here by Buster Harland. But it eventually goes over the line. What a great game so far. Port Melbourne 9 19 73, leading Sandringham 10 4 64. Right, it comes into the hands of Owen. He goes for the wide hand pass, gets out to little Gossie here. Gossie can't grab the ball. It's scooped out to him once again. And Goss running around opponents gets the bounce in, goes for a long hand pass. Here's bowled over after he got the hand pass in. But look at that bad pass from Evans. Put it straight into the hands of Clark of Sandringham. Well, the umpire now calls play on as Clark comes up field, puts it up towards centre half forward. Ivanov goes up, goes through his hands. Is he quick enough? Owen now gets it, passes it out wide. Neville Stibbard comes up, and Stibbard now gains his balance after being knocked. He's a good, solid player, Stibbard. And there he goes for the short pass, and it's marked by just marked by Christo. Christo decides to go back for his kick. Look, Stibbard's made good position there. But he's going to come up close to his opponent as he puts it on its way up towards Holt in the pocket. Holt comes in and takes the mark. Well, Cook was on his own right in the goal square, but... Uh, well, they're struggling away. Holt is saying a word as he moves away from Buse. Another squirrel, I think. And anyway, uh, here's Holt. He's kicked two. Lines them up. He's coming in from quite an angle this time. So Sammy Hoff lines him up very deliberately, puts the ball on its way, and what's he done with it? Now it's Mark right on the goal line, and a good mark then by Coelli. Saved in the right position, comes up to be marked by Critch on the half forward line. Well, with the breeze that's blowing down the ground, um, Port Melbourne will need to get a couple of extra goals on the board. Puts it on its way, it won't be a goal, and it's going straight towards the Sandringham players. Look at them crowding over the top of the ball, and the umpire will be forced to ball it up. Field umpire for today is umpire Marcy. Graham Marcy. He's speaking to Sam Holt. And there we have the good wine in the background as uh, it's forced over the line and out of bounds, another throw in. I'm the only one tasting it too, fellas. Yes, I know. Right, and it comes, and there's a kick then for goal, this time by Rasmussen, but he's put it through for another minor score. What a fantastic score of behinds on the board. 
Rasmussen himself has contributed to this in kicking one goal five. But that takes Port Melbourne onto 9.20 as against Sandringham's respectable looking score of 10-4. There's the kickoff from Alf Buse, who's given uh, Cookie uh, Curry. There was a push in the back, but the umpire allows the mark. And here's the kick going into the centre of the ground. Moving across here is Wally of Sandringham, but it's a free kick, and the free kick will be taken by Ivanov. There's the kick from uh, Ivanov out towards the... Oh, another uh, round the neck, but the umpire allows it to continue. And there's a hand pass coming from Wally. He gets it out here to Pledger. Pledger down the flank position. Anderson came out, and it's forced over the line and out of bounds right near the dandy dollar half-forward flank. So we're waiting the throw-in. Up they go, and Owen goes for the knockout, but it comes down into the hands of Lyons. Lyons progresses up towards that forward zone, and it could be out on the full. What's the decision? Out on the full. So we'll see Beecroft take the kickoff here as we bring in Don Hyde. Ten points the difference here. Port Melbourne in front, 74 to 64. And there's the kick down towards Big Anderson. Anderson knocking the ball down, picked up here by Ivanov. Ivanov now playing the ball for Port Melbourne to their half-forward line. Hayden not able to get the mark in. Kicked away here by Edwards, out towards the uh, centre wing. And over here the mark is taken by Goss. Goss now, swinging play for Port Melbourne to their half-forward line. Holders there, but Christo behind the pack takes the mark. Downfield, Freddie Cook uh, loses his uh, footing, and uh, he won't want to do that against Alf Buse, who's attended him very closely today. It's been a great uh, duel between the two of them as Christo kicks into the full forward zone. Long kick. There's Cook in the middle of two Sandringham players. Picked up here by Rasmussen. Left foot kick, and it's out of bounds on the full. And Rasmussen adds to his tally of inaccurate kicking. This time he doesn't score a point even. 9 20 74 to 10 4 64. Port Melbourne in front by 10 points. In the third quarter, six minutes gone. And Alf Buse, one of the uh, most vigorous and uh, strong fullbacks in the VFA First Division, about to put the ball back into play again to the halfback line. He's looking. Upfield for the big fellow uh, there in Thompson, not able to uh, get it. That's picked up by uh, Wally. This kick is not a major one. It comes towards the centre wing, around the neck to George Allen. And uh, George Allen uh, gets that free. Not a good kick, it's a wobbly kick, but it's uh, picked up by Holt. He gets it to Critch. Uh, he wasn't in any position to get the hand pass, and he's lucky to get the free kick. Hand pass from Critch to Holt. Holt to the forward pocket, a chance here for Christo. Christo's been a pretty good player. He hooks the ball back into the Port Melbourne goal. That's a good shot. And Cook is up. And Alfie Buse in frustration and desperation throws Cook down to the ground. I think that was more frustration, uh, Phil, than uh, viciousness. I think so too, Don. He didn't really hurt him, and I think Fred uh, helped himself on his way as well. I agree with you, Don. Three goals he's kicked, Fred Cook. Port Melbourne lead by 10 points. Fred Cook missed an easy one from right in front early in the game. Let's see if he can put this one through. Kennedy about to come on. Well, what's happening here? Buse. Ray Gould was too close. Ray Gould of Sandingham was too close, so there's about a couple of metres that the umpire could bring the player back at his mark, and that's exactly what he's done. Kennedy coming on the field for Sandringham. Well, he can't take uh, the Sandringham player back much further. He'll be out of the ground. There's a kick by Cook, and he's put it through. Four goals to him, and Port Melbourne 10-20, 80. Sandringham 10-4, 64. Super Trader, only at Moorabbin. OK, nine minutes gone in quarter number three and a 16-point margin now opened up by Port Melbourne over Sandringham in the second semi-final as the ball is uh, picked up here in the centre by Harlan. Harlan now putting it in towards Fred Cook has changed one of his boots. Over the top he goes, but Alfie Buse again has outmarked him. This has been a tremendous tussle between two very good players today and full marks to both of them. There's Buse kicking the ball back towards the centre wing. Lord it is, knocks the ball down. It comes to Hayden. Hayden not able to be uh, contained by Wilkins. He gets his kick towards Holt. Holt uh, plays the ball on the ground, hooks it back with a hand pass to Evans. Evans will kick a goal. Port Melbourne, 11-20, 86. Sandringham, 10-4, 64. Two goals to Evans. 
Nine and a half minutes gone in the third quarter, and Port Melbourne kicking with the wind. 86 now to Sandringham, 64. Here's Wilkins trying to lift his side, not able to get it. Good play by Harland, good strong play. He takes the ball out towards the centre wing. Magnificent football by Harland to the half-forward line. And he was looking there for Rasmussen, but the player to take the mark was Gould. Gould on the Sandringham halfback flank position. There's the score. 86 plays 64 to the centre wing. Ivanov. Ivanov. A chance now to uh, penetrate the Sandringham defence again. There's his kick to the half forward line. Over the top there was uh, Thompson. Not able to get it. Taken by Rasmussen. A hand pass to Evans. Evans a hand pass to Cook. Cook runs into an open goal. Shot the gate. goes further ahead and Port Melbourne now really turning it on and applying tremendous pressure. Bill Thompson, the uh, Liston Trophy winner for this year, do you feel that uh, that uh, Sandringham can withstand this tremendous pressure being no, applied now by Port? No, not at the moment. Port have really settled down and started to get a bit of system in their game. They're getting easy goals now, whereas before they're just kicking from anywhere and Sandringham's back line of stop giving the pressure they had before. Tell you what, uh, Harlan's lifted his game too, which is paying a uh, great deal. He's getting the ball away from the centre, but here's the chance now. Look at Port players go in. Christo was held, and he must get the free kick. That's against Pledger. They're getting the ball away from the centre of the Port Melbourne side. He gets it out to Holt. Holt has the chance now to get it up towards the half-forward line. Look at the meeting shoulder to shoulder. Comes through towards Evans, and uh, here's the chance now for Edwards to break away for Sandringham, but it comes through to Gould. Gould can see Wilkinson up here and gets it into the hands of Wilkinson. Wilkinson Wilkin now will go for the run. Wilkins up towards the half-forward line. A good mark by Carroll. He's gotten the hand pass across here towards Bell. Bell down towards O'Brien. O'Brien shoots for goal, and it's through. So Sandringham go to 11 4 70 with Port Melbourne on 12 20 92. Hainan gets the ball away from the centre up towards the half forward line. Rasmussen is being tackled by Carroll and again Rasmussen Holt came into it. He gets it back to Evans who is held. We're not in possession and Evans will get the free kick. Right, uh, Craig Kelly, a quick score. Over here, Phil, 10 6 66, 10 11 71 in the 10 minute mark of the second quarter, third quarter. Right back here. And here's Evans putting the ball on its way, gets it right up towards the goals. And it's a goal according to Fred Cook, it's a goal! So Port Melbourne go on to 13-20, 98. That was his third, Evans, with Sandringham on 11-4-70. Sandringham runner being kept pretty busy, going out onto the centre of the ground here now. It's interesting, Phil, up until half-time, Port Melbourne has scored 8-19. Since half-time, they've kicked five goals once, so they've certainly put their kicking boots on at half-time. Yes, well, let's see if Sandringham uh, can come back at them. Sandringham, a good side, playing well. Here we go, Hainan up in the ruck and he gets a big knockout. Little Goss is on the run there, being tackled by Wilkins. Wilkins offloads uh, Goss, but it will be a ball up. Port Melbourne are a different side now, Bill Thompson. Yes, they're really starting to get into uh, force. They're running, they're talking well, instead of just battling all the time like they were before, just kicking anywhere, they're looking for each other, they're running past, they're, and they're winning out of the centre, which makes a big difference as well. Right, here's a race for the ball, and in the race is Buster Harlan. He's lifted his game by a yard in pace at the moment, as he goes for the long hand pass across here to Ivanov. Ivanov will send it downfield with a bad pass from Ivanov, goes into the middle of the pack instead of going for the big kick. Now what's happening out here, it's kicked by Thompson, Roberts Thompson out towards Lyons. Lyons up towards the wing on the other side of the ground and taking the mark was Kennedy. Kennedy of Sandringham, uh, it'll be Owens on him, but uh, there's a 15 metre penalty. Owen knew straight away. And he's, uh, Owens was quite right then, you know, in hanging on to him because he, he was ready to punch that ball over the Lyons. No. No way, that's what he did, but as soon as he got away from him. All right, let's get on with the game. Up towards the half-forward line, Ivanov tried to take the mark, taken by Owens this time. He gets the kick right around the wing, they can raffle it, Sandringham, and the mark has been taken by Clark. They're coming up towards the 15-minute mark here in the second quarter. Big men wanted, pushed wide, and here's the chance now for Sandringham. Lyons takes the shot for goal, it's offline, and through for one point. So Sandringham move on to 11-5, 71 to Port Melbourne's 13-20, 98. Yarraville have hit the 
front over there. Let's take a quick report from Craig Kelly. Yes, a very interesting quarter over here, Phil, at the 11-minute mark. Garavola fighting back very much. They've got the eight of the wind at the moment, but still, I think, Mordiatic will take it out. OK, Craig, and it comes up towards the half-back line. Anderson failed to take the mark. Little Goss has the chance to get a kick in. He gets it around here towards Buster Harland. Harland now with his kick up towards Port Melbourne's half-forward line. Goal battling away down there, but Sam Holt coming through. He passes back to Goss. Goss can line them up, put the ball on its way, and what is it? Put box, and it's another goal. So Port Melbourne now go to 104, as against Sandringham, 71. Hide. The 16-minute mark of the third quarter, Port Melbourne now hitting their straps, 104 to 71. Tony Franklin about to come on for the uh, Sandringham side as we see Carroll take the mark. Carroll now into the full four zone. Pledge is the only one there for Sandringham. And we see it easily taken away by George Allen. Allen now upfield to Evans. Magnificent pass. And Evans has been a star in this corner. He gets the ball down towards Critch, who fumbles at the crucial moment. Critch gets possession down to Christo on his own. And Port Melbourne playing inspired football. He gets it across to Goss. Goss in towards Fred Cook. He'll come in from behind. The ball bounces away from Cook. Now he's got it. A handball away. Looking for Holt. Holt in an impossible position. Shoots from a very acute angle. And he's offline. Well, as we mentioned, uh, Tony Franklin is uh, on the ground in the uh, interchange system. He came on a minute ago. Uh, replacing uh, Lyons, uh, who has just come off the oval as we wait for uh, Buse to put the ball back into play again. I think Coach Norman Brown of Port Melbourne would be feeling a lot happier, Don, with the uh, improved play of Port Melbourne in this third quarter. Well, there's Norm Brown there, the uh, former captain and coach, and now the non-playing uh, coach of the Port Melbourne team, as the ball is back in play again. And up here it's Evans. Evans has been a, a big kick-getter in this quarter. He plays the ball wide uh, to the flank, and he finds Rasmussen. Port Melbourne 14-21, 105, and Sandringham 11-5, 71. Evans has had five kicks in this quarter, but this is Rasmussen uh, who got the ball from Evans, kicking the ball in towards goal. Cook is there again. Over the top was Buse uh, getting up there. Holt comes in. That's out of bounds. And the crowd here today had the second semi-final, enjoying every minute of this uh, action-packed uh, finals match in VFA football. The ball taken here by Dennis Clark. Clark kicks it in towards the centre. Allen's there for Port Melbourne. Fumbles. Almost uh, went down. To put it mildly, there's Evans again. A big kick getter in this game behind the play. There's a tussle as Evans kicks it in towards goal. Touched. One point to Port Melbourne. They're 14 22, 106 to 11 5 71. And cooler heads prevailing in the centre after that flare up between several players. 18 minutes gone in quarter number three. The big second semi final at the Junction Oval. And over at Turak Park, Morty Alec have hit the front again. They're five points in the lead. There's the score, 77 to 72. Rasmussen, a wonderful player all day, takes yet another mark. That's his eighth mark. And this will be his 15th kick. He's been the driving force on that forward line for the Port Melbourne side today. Kicks into the full forward zone, punched away from Cook again. And it's a free kick going to uh, Sandringham to be taken by uh, Thompson, uh, who was pushed, uh, rather abuse. Uh, he gets it upfield. Now, what's happening here? A free kick going uh, to uh, O'Brien. Port Melbourne, 106, Sandringham, 71. O'Brien's kick in towards the centre. Coelho's there, but the man again, Rasmussen, takes the mark again. His ninth mark across towards the flank position. The player on his own over there is Hayden. And Hayden now is a big kick. And if he decides to have a shot, he'll certainly make the distance. Let's see if he's got the accuracy. Another goal. Port Melbourne, 15-22. Cole uh, by Don Hyde for that uh, goal. It was his first for the year. All right, here's Critch now, playing it up towards the half-forward line. No one can take the mark, and um, it's Hayden who's trying to get in there. Oh, look at him offloaded. The umpire must give a free kick to Thompson. Roberts Thompson is the player to get the free kick out there. 
There goes the halfback line on the outer side of the ground. The players set themselves up. They fly for it. Wilkins, oh, I thought he took the mark then. Took two bites at it. But here's Harlan coming down the ground again as he lifted the play here. Goes down towards that half-forward line. Evans couldn't control the ball, and it'll eventually be put over the line. What's a free kick to Port? What do they call it for? Holding the ball, Bill? Yes, yeah, so I say it is holding the ball. Evans yes. is very interested spectator. <laughs> Just come off the bay. All right. We're just waiting. This is the 18th kick for Evans. There we go, up towards the forward zone. Freddie Cook could only get one hand to it, and it's gone through for another point. Look at that mammoth total of behinds up there to Port Melbourne. They're 15.23. There it is in the background. 113 to Sandringham's 11.5.71. Kickoff goes out to Clark, and Clark has the chance to break away. He was caught, but the umpire caught play on. Comes through here to Franklin. Franklin in turn out towards the wing on the outer side of the ground. Punched away. Kennedy is the uh, player in there. Try to break away. Gets a push in the back, and the umpire will give the free kick. Kennedy immediately off. Now, let's see what Sandringham can do. Comes up towards their half-forward line. Up they fly for it. No one able to take the mark. Here's the big opportunity. As moving in his line, shoots for Go Brian. Shoots for goal, and it's full points on the ball. Yeah, they're relying on the little blokes getting the goals like that. They've got no forwards. They're kicking up there, and the forwards are letting them down badly, and uh, Port's little fellas are just running wild. OK, here we go again. It comes up towards the half-forward line of uh, Port Melbourne. Gould has the chance to break away. Hand passes it out here to Pledger. Pledger will get it right away, around the wing to Wilkinson. Wilkinson with a further hand pass. Goes into the hands of Bell, and Bell now sends it up towards their forward zone, and it could be a mark. No, nearly took a one-handed, but he got into the back of Anderson. And the free kick will be taken by Anderson. That was against Lorb of Sandringham. There's Evans and Critch both out there, and Evans has got a paddock to play in. Hand pass coming up to Critch. Look at that. Now Critch will get it further downfield, gets it out towards the half-forward line, and it's Buster Harland. Harland bangs it up towards the forward zone. In comes Cook, and he's taken another spectacular. Well, don't forget the news at six on Channel O tonight. And the Brady Bunch Variety Hour at 6.30, the $6 million man at 7.30, and the Sunday movie premiere. He's kicked five so far, Cookie. I'll tell you about the mechanic, too. The one that made a bolt for the door. All right, there it goes on its way. And he's put it through for another goal. And Port Melbourne go to 16.23, 119 to Marcy to get it away. Yarraville 74, what a great game that is. I uh, wish we could take you to a bit of it, but this one's just as exciting. Morty Alex 77. There goes the uh, bounce of the ball, and it's pushed wide of the pack. Chance for Pledger to break it away. Wilkinson comes into it, but Rasmussen gets it out here towards Harland. Buster Harland with a hand pass to Holt. Holt lines them up and right through the middle. Port Melbourne now 17-23, Sandringham 12-5. Let's take you over. At the, um, at the ground right at the 25-minute mark. Into time on now. Here's Don Hyde. Well, uh, Port Melbourne, uh, eight goals up, and Sandringham falling down in their attacking zone today, as against uh, Port Melbourne, who uh, have uh, plenty of effective uh, forwards, including Rasmussen, Holt, and, of course, Fred Cook. There's uh, Evans getting Port moving again as he gets it to Critch. His hand pass intercepted by Clark. He plays it to the Sandringham half-forward line, and there's a mark to Coelli. Coelli, better known as a defender, playing at centre-half forward now for the Sandringham team and a badly needed uh, goal if he can kick it dropping short knocked away by Beecroft opportunity there for O'Brien left foot snap high into the air a chance here although the Sandringham player had a bit of a look around it's picked up here by Hutchison not a good kick by him Allen comes through hard Pledger but it's Ian Allen picks the ball up taken by Goss Goss a drop kick to Rasmussen who will mark again Hand pass, Heinen, Heinen to Holt. Left foot kick by Holt to Cook. Play on. Play on, says the umpire. Knocked away by Gould in defence for Sandringham. It's going to be a ball up here. Uh, Fred Cook smiling. He wasn't smiling earlier in the game. But he is now, and well he should be because his team is 125 to Sandringham 77. Knocked away by Edwards. Across to Tony Franklin. Franklin to the centre wing. Kennedy 
And Hutchison uh, ran into him, and uh, Kennedy's back at his feet. He's OK. Kennedy now putting Sandringham into attack towards half forward, taken by Coelli. Coelli, a high kick, slams away towards the forward pocket. Out of bounds. That was good play by Coelli then, Dom, but it deserved a better result than going out of bounds. Uh, watching Beecroft, who's been a good mark in defence today for Port, kicking it down towards Hainan. He doesn't let him down. Port Melbourne, 17-23, 1-25. Sandringham, 12-5-77. A mammoth score by Port Melbourne, who are really hitting their straps uh, late in the third quarter. Taken by Harland. Harland across to uh, Ian Owen. Owen now steadies and kicks towards Holt. Playing wide on the half-forward line. And uh, Port Melbourne uh, well on top now. Sandringham lagging yards behind in the race for the ball. And if he decides to have a shot, Holt could score from here. Doesn't quite make the distance. Cook. Oh, he'll get the free kick, surely. No. Taken away by Franklin. Oh, they lose the ball, Sandringham. And it's taken here by the big fellow, Anderson. Anderson, a hand pass, looking for Christo. Kicked away quickly by Kennedy. Uh, defensively to Edwards. Edwards, a left foot kick along the boundary line. And over the line it goes on the full. And Sandringham really have fallen in a bit of a heap at the moment. Uh, with Port Melbourne playing very assured football. Just one interesting point, Don. Fred Cook has not received a free kick since uh, the start of the game. There's the kicker. There's a goal by Cook. Yes, he has. He's kicked seven goals. And really, I guess after an effort like that, Phil, Fred Cook now, I'd say, forgetting what goals he scored, Buse has outpointed him pretty well nearly every time they've gone near that ball. Yet he, Cook, he has kicked seven goals. Well, that first half, he outpointed him the whole time, but... He's they're moving the ball that well now that he can get into position a bit quicker. The little blokes are moving it fast, and that makes it easier for him and easier for the whole side. And they're all coming into it. Fred Cook has kicked seven goals one of the matches. We approach the three-quarter time break. This is Ian Hutchison, who was a sensation early in the game and has uh, died out a little. He's on the ball now, puts it into attack. Sandringham falling down in attack. O'Brien, snapshot, off line. Sandringham getting the ball past the centre quite a lot, but they've got nobody downfield now that Hutchison's been uh, covered uh, to uh, capitalise uh, on the opportunities being presented to them. And there's a very uh, anxious former runner for the uh, Port Melbourne side. He's not allowed on the ground because uh, he was suspended last year, Alan Thomas. But I guess when you sit on top of the fence, uh, that's as close as you can get. One of the real personalities in the Port Melbourne club. The kick away here defensively for Port Melbourne. Here we see it taken by Harland. Harland, the hand pass across to Critch. Critch getting it forward under pressure to Christo. And Port Melbourne doing everything right. Downfield, Fred Cook lurks, but the ball goes to the flank. And Rasmussen, who's been a mammoth kick getter in this game, takes another mark. This will be his 17th kick. That was his 11th mark, and he kicks it in towards Fred Cook, who's kicked seven goals already. A couple of players up against Cook to knock it away. Kicked away by Buse, the fullback, out towards the uh, flank. Evans. Running in as Evans, who's been a very good player this quarter. Went to handball and then uh, decides to kick it left foot in towards Cook again. Cook is up. Well, Cook running riot now in the Port Melbourne attacking zone. He's kicked seven. We're almost at the three-quarter time interval at Port Melbourne, moving into a winning position. They're 131 to Sandringham 77. Fred Cook has kicked seven. He decides a short pass it to Christo, who's left unattended, and no excuse there by the Sandringham defence to allow a Port Melbourne player to be standing on his own. But it puts Port Melbourne in a better position to score from where Cook uh, was standing a moment ago. And we watch Jimmy Christo on centre field. In towards goal, but one point only. 28 marks to 14 in this quarter in Port Melbourne's favour. Right, 32 minutes gone in the third quarter. Here's Philip Gibbs. Thank you, Don. And we're just waiting on Alf Buse to take the kickoff. Sandringham 12-5, 77. Port Melbourne 18-24, 132. Morty Alec lead by 12 points in the grand final over at Turak Park. At the end of this quarter, we'll take you to Craig Kelly for a rundown on it in a few moments. Here it comes up towards the um, half back line. No one able to take the mark. The umpire's given a free out here to Christo. So Christo 
He's kicked four points straight. That's four points crooked in my book. Anyway, Christo lines them up. Puts it on its way. It's a good kick, but what's the line like? It's another goal to Port Melbourne. That's their 11th goal for the quarter. They move on to 19-24. As against Sandringham's 12 goals, 5. And I've left the cameramen alone today. I've got into the floor managers well and truly. Nicky Welton, if you're watching, hard luck, son. No, I don't agree with that remark either, Nick. <laughs> All right, umpire Marcy coming in for the bounce of the ball. Long quarter, 32 and a half minutes gone by. There it is, forced down to the ground. Comes uh, through here by Lorb. Lorb gets a hand. Oh, got it there. Three right in front of the umpire. Hutchison was smacked in the mouth and didn't get the free. There's Lorb getting a push in the back now. And it could be on the umpire coming in. Look at him go here. Wilkins in there, and he's been a great player for Sandringham today. Doesn't need that. Anyway, he's an experienced enough footballer uh, to move away from it all. But I wouldn't like to meet him eye to eye by the look on his face there. A good mark taken by Ivanov. Ivanov now gets a kick across here to Evans, who's played well here in this quarter. Hand pass this time to Christo. Christo plays it out wide. Out comes Cook. Cook with the ball back here towards Stibbard, who's right down the field. Stibbard with a further hand pass out to Evans. Evans taps it on, but he'll have to ball it up, I reckon. Yes, he's blown the whistle. Will be a ball up. Port Melbourne, 1924, 138. Here's Don Hyde. Well, here we go, the final quarter now. Port Melbourne in a winning position, 138 to 77. The last quarter underway and a free kick right at the centre bounce against McNicholas. It'll be taken by Stretch Anderson. Held him by the arm. And he didn't, he didn't want to dance with him either. There's Anderson now, kicking the ball wide to the flank, putting Port into attack. Knocked away defensively by Thompson of Sandringham. Picked up here by Critch. Left foot kick by him in towards the forward pocket. Holt is there, roaming far and wide on the forward line. Short pass. Kick is smothered and taken away here by Thompson. In towards Wilkins. He can't get it. Sandringham can't uh, quite get their game flowing. The whistle goes. Early in the last quarter, Port Melbourne, after a great 11-goal burst in the third term, have gone to 19-24, 138-12, 5-77. .5 Play underway again, it's kicked away by Gould of Sandringham to their half-forward line, scouting well as Ivanov, who uh, gathers the ball in from the pack, kicks it uh, out towards Evans, who was a uh, good kick-getter in the third quarter. Uh, he gets uh, his game going again with a hand pass, this time to Allen. Allen uh, on the half-forward line for Port Melbourne, uh, can't quite uh, get possession as Pledger comes at him. Ever uh, picked up now by Allen, he gets it to Critch, Critch into the forward pocket, up as Rasmussen can't quite pull the mark in, and it's out of bounds on the Port Melbourne attacking zone. Rasmussen has been a dynamic player today, a big kick getter across that half forward line, and Sandringham have been unable to contain him all day. Knocked away there by Heenan. Chance here for. Oh, there's a free kick. I was going to say for Sandringham to come forward, and they will most certainly now. Uh, with a free kick going to Wally. And let's see if he can make a major move down the field from that half-back flank position. That's only his second kick for the day, so he'll need to do something. It's a pretty good kick down towards half-forward. Up as Carroll, uh, knocked away from him by Owen. Picked up by Hutchison, who's being well covered now. And the ball is picked up by Goss. Goss slams the ball to Hayden. Well, I don't know whether he played around the neck or the one-handed mark. Around the neck, he's paid. Let's watch it on uh, the CUB slow-mo replay. Tony Hayden. Well, he's going to kick it towards goal. Let's watch the goal kick. It's a long kick. It swings away, and it hits the post. And yet another point to Port Melbourne, who are 19-25 to Sandringham 12-5. Alf Buse. The, the players who, who's had the unenviable task of looking after Fred Cook, century goal kicker today, and Cook has kicked seven goals. Downfield, and gee, what a magnificent game Evans has played, particularly since half-time. Now he short passes to Critch. Sandringham is slow, they're yards behind the Port Melbourne players now, and if they're going to win this game, they want to speed up a little, in towards the forward pocket, and uh, Cook can't to get possession. 
And he pats uh, Jimmy Christo on the head. You know why? Because Christo was in the position to mark and Cookie yelled out from behind him, let it go. And being a good player, he didn't let it go. You'd agree with that, Ted? Yes, Don. I'm just watching John Greening running around the boundary line there too. Well, John Greening uh, is off as Sandringham uh, desperately trying to get into attack. A play with the ball now is Hutchison, and there's his kick towards Carroll at half forward. Carroll number four has the ball knocked away by Ian Owen, there number six in the frame. Stibbard's been a solid defender, and uh, he kicks the ball along that flank position now for Port Melbourne. Allen is there. Trying to get possession is Hutchison. Hutchison being well tagged. He gets a hand pass away uh, towards his teammate coming through in uh, Thompson. Thompson gets it to the Sandringham half-forward line. But again, there's nobody home in the attacking zone for uh, uh, Sandringham. And Ian Owen easily takes the mark. And uh, Critch takes it now in front of the uh, IWF sign over there as he kicks it to the flank position. And the mark taken down here by Thompson. There's the uh, kick downfield in towards the centre. And Sandringham into attack. Let's see if they can capitalise on this opportunity. There's a great mark and a hand pass to O'Brien. O'Brien into an open goal and a badly needed goal to Sandringham. Just awarding a uh, free kick here. It'll be taken by Pledger. Held when not in possession. Wasn't that a beautiful shot of that lady? She couldn't believe it earlier. <laughs> As it comes up towards the half forward line and it's Hutchison taking the mark. Hutchison up towards the half forward uh, or out towards the half forward flank. Dennis Clark of Sandringham comes in to take it. Now Dennis Clark with his kick on its way right up towards centre forward. Out came the big fellow in Beecroft. He failed to take the mark but he's played an excellent game. Should have been holding the man then but Lyons takes the snapshot for goal and he's put it through for another one. He's here today 14,793. Gate takings of 18,897. Here's the chance now as a pick up by uh, Rasmussen and he puts it through for one point. He's kicked one goal six Rasmussen. Not good kicking at all when you look at Port Melbourne's score up there of 1926. Uh, they have kicked a lot of behinds to Sandringham's 14-5-89, 140 to 89. There's the kickoff, and it's been marked in the centre by Dennis Clark, or short of the centre. Clark gets his kick in over the centre, and here's the opportunity now for uh, Bell to put it to Wilkins, and Wilkins, when he moves away from the centre, moves beautifully to put it up towards the forward zone, and their forwards weren't there, and it's forced through for one point only. So Sandringham go on to 14-7-90. That's 50 points down on Port Melbourne's score of 1926-140. Right now, here's Beecroft taking the kickoff. And here's the kick coming out towards Annanson. Annanson takes the mark, then moves around, goes for the hand pass up here, sees Critch on his own, and Critch now can go for the foot pass up towards uh, Hainan, but there's a push in the back, and the free kick will be taken by Sandringham. Let's take a quick report now from Craig Kelly. Over here, it's a very interesting game. Morty Alec 13, 15, 93, Yarraville 12, 9, 81. Two goals the difference, and Yarraville is still well in it at the seven-minute mark. Good crowd over there too, Craig, as it comes up towards the half forward line uh, here for uh, Sandringham but again a push in the back and the free kick is taken by Anderson who decides on the hand pass across to Critch, Critch here to Christo, Christo in turn down towards the forward zone but uh, Coelho waiting for it, puts the big arm up, doesn't get the mark but gets his kick in eventually with good play out towards the wing under the Walter Miller sign uh, out there, pretty Cook works for them, that is O'Brien to Clark and Clark in turn Goes right downfield with good side stepping, puts the ball on its way, and it's another goal. Up to Sandy. Okay, Yarraville have scored a goal, haven't they? That's right, Phil. There's only one kick in this. It's 87 to 93, and there's another ball up in the centre with umpire Tory. It's a beauty. Righto. Well, we'll leave you on a beauty there, Craig, as it uh, comes to centre half forward, and it's taken here by Wilkins. Wilkins has been a great player anyway for um, Sandringham today as he gets it out to Clark and Clark from the half forward line has the chance to put it further down forward. Going to be a dark night by the look of it as it gets up towards the centre forward zone and taken by Kennedy, snap shoots for goal and he's put another one in the third quarter. No, they're really fired up when they're in the third quarter there but they thought they'd won it already I think but uh, I think they'll start to settle down shortly once they see them coming back a bit. OK, here's Kennedy now kicking it up forward and down here to take it away is Lyons. Lyons has put it out on the full. Kevin Goss about to come on. And who's off? Sammy Holt is just coming off outside the picture there. There he is. He's played a great game, but uh, Kevin Goss. 
He's been injured for most of the year, hasn't he, Kevin Goss? Yes, he has, Phil. He's been injured. Come back. He's been playing with the seconds now. Back physically fit again. Now, here's the kick about to be taken as Sam Holt uh, gets around to the floors. He comes off the ground. Anderson plays it towards the half back line. Up goes Hainan. Hainan has it punched away from him. He was held then, uh, Law, but uh, Lions, but the umpire allowed the play to continue. A show for Carroll. Lost his footing. And who is it coming through? Evans. Oh, he'll be too fast for the rest of them. He's grabbed. We're not in possession, but we'll get a pass in. Got it out to Critch. Critch has pulled around the neck. Must get the free kick. That was against Terry Wilkins, really. So we're up to the 11-minute mark. Here's Donald Hyde. Thank you, Phil. And as we watch uh, uh, Critch in front of the Walper Muir sign, Harland rather, get the ball across uh, field. Getting up was Wally, not able to get it. Picked up by Kevin Goss. His pass is not good. Straight into the hands of Buse. Alf Buse now defending uh, for uh, Sandringham. Oh, up was Hainan. Came down pretty hard. Coelli takes the ball for Sandringham. Gets it downfield. Long kick. Can Sandringham score again? Great Morty goal Alec. to Lord. Morty Alec have kicked another goal. 89 to... Uh, but we'll see what happens here. Well, there's a kick in by Lord. And a kick off the ground would do it. Waiting for the all-clear to be given. Oh, it's a free kick to Beecroft, is it? You called that a goal, didn't you, Don? Well, I did, Phil, yes. Yes, it went right through the big sticks, that's why. You see, the small ones are points, Phil. No, I agree <laughs> with you anyway. 140 to 108, and it's Port Melbourne still in front, but Sandringham fighting back in this last quarter. There's a kick away by Anderson, up towards Ian Owen. Owen has the ball, in fact, knocks the ball away himself. And it's out of bounds on the half-forward flank for Sandringham. McNicholas there. Knocked away by Hainan. An opportunity here for Ian Hutchison. He can't quite keep the ball in play. Well, full marks to Sandringham. They've come right back at Port Melbourne in this quarter, but they're down by 32 points, and that's a mammoth lead to uh, give away with only about 17 or 18 minutes left to play. Picked up by Owen. He gets it down the field towards Critch, and out of bounds it goes again. Port Melbourne playing defensively at the moment to try and curb the uh, great uh, persistence and determination being shown by Sandringham in the last quarter as they try and bridge the gap. Centre wing throwing. McNicholas versus Hainan. A push out there by uh, McNicholas, but no free kick. It's picked up here by O'Brien. O'Brien kicks it across to the, the Sandringham half forward line. Up is Bell, but the player in front takes the mark, and it's John Greening back on the ground again. Garrelville 88, but Morty Alec well in front there, 105 in the uh, second division grand final. In towards the centre of the ground, and the mark here taken by um, the Port Melbourne player Harland, and here's Sid Anderson coming off now. In the interchange system, a greeting on in his place. Down towards the uh, half forward line for Port Melbourne. Evans is here. Has the ball kicked away from him. This is Kalani. Caught with the ball. And the free kick will go to Critch. A 32-point margin and Port Melbourne in command. Fred Cook is there. And the free kick goes against him to be taken by Buse. Even though Cook has kicked seven goals today, let's give full marks for the ga great game played by the fullback for Sandringham, Alf Buse. His port into attack again as Allen gets it across to Kevin Goss to Cook again. He's paying the mark. Now let's watch this on uh, the CUB slow mo. Buse versus Cook. Did he hold it long enough? OK. Fred Cook, right in front of goal. He's already kicked seven. At the moment, Port Melbourne lead by 32 points. There's his kick. Eight goals. Quarter, 16 minutes gone of the second division, VFA first division semi-final. And it's Port Melbourne, 146, and Sandringham, 108. Here's Philip Gibbs. At the 16-minute mark, Don, and here's Sandringham into attack. Up towards their half-forward line, but knocked down to the ground. Let's see who can get away with it. Going down there was Kennedy, but the umpires come in. Umpire Graham Marcy for a ball up. We have Port Melbourne, 20 146. To Sandringham, 17-6, 108. 
Now there's the big knockout. Came that time from McNicholas. Goes well wide of the pack. Pursuing it there was Franklin, but it's gone over the line again. It's still on the forward line of Sandringham, but time is well running out for them. 20-26, 1.46. Sandringham, 17-6, 1.08. So it'll be a preliminary final between Coburg and Sandringham next week at this ground. Should be a beauty too. Because Sandringham, only for Port getting that run in the third quarter, Sandringham have put up a terrific match here today. I didn't think they'd go as well on this big ground, but they have gone well. But under pressure in the third quarter, they just, um, well, wilted. That's all I can say. They've done well in the first half and again well in the last quarter. But Port Melbourne are on top now, and they're doing it at will as it comes up towards the uh, half-forward line. And the mark was taken then by Rasmussen. Rasmussen gets a hand pass across here, and it's Christo who'll put it further downfield to Goss. Goss in turn towards the centre forward zone. Here's Cook getting possession, and Cook has taken the mark. Now, Buse has made sure, but he's pushed him right through the points, and the umpire's right on the ball. Have a look exactly where Cook took the mark. Now, Ian, how many has he kicked? He's kicked eight so far. He's kicked eight goals, one. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, there's the difference. A top-class full forward and a top personality. Lined them up, got him close, but there's his ninth. Nine-one is Kill being bought uh, back to field umpire Graham Marcy. And we're about to get underway again. We're coming up to the 19-minute mark in the last quarter. And Sandringham can't do it from here. 152 to 108. There's a knockout by uh, Goss. That was Kevin Goss, but it goes to Lyons. Lyons of Sandringham right downfield. And uh, here's the big opportunity as Franklin grabs the ball, goes for goal. He's put it through for one point only. So Sandringham go to 17-7, 109. Port Melbourne, 21-26, 152. Well, just while we're waiting for the kickoff, uh, JJ Liston Trophy winner, uh, Bill, Bill Thompson, what do you think will happen next week now at Sandringham and Coburg? Well, um, it'll be a very good game. I think they're pretty well on the pass, Sandringham and Coburg, and uh, I think, well, Coburg might do it after the week's rest. Uh, Sandringham have had the week's rest last week, but have come into a really hard game this week, and I think next week if Coburg play their play-on game like they did last week, I think they'll come out winners. I know uh, Bill Thompson, uh, the ball is out of bounds on the wing, on the outer side of the ground. Just waiting for the throw in, and there it comes near the Glen Park uh, fruit juices sign. Pick up here by Critch, he sends it up, bound to the half forward line. Away we go again, and uh, here's Rasmussen, is it? Or yes, Rasmussen who came into it, turns around, puts it across towards centre half forward. Carroll takes the mark, gets a hand pass in, and eventually it comes back to Coelli, that long striding Coelli, getting away from the little fellow in Christo, up towards the half forward line, beats the players down here, moving in as Wally to try and trap the ball, he does, passes it back over his head to Hutchison, Hutchison goes for a further hand pass, but still no one able to grab it cleanly and get it away, it comes out of the pack to the boundary line and knocked over by Wally for a throw in. We're coming up to the 21 minute mark here in the last quarter with Port Melbourne 21 20 26, 152 to Sandringham, 17, 7, 109. Here's Donald Hyde. Thank you, Philip Gibbs. Port Melbourne, 21, 26 to 17, 7. And Port Melbourne have shown their class today after their drubbing at the hands of Sandringham a few weeks ago in the home-and-home -home matches. But finals are a different game. And Port Melbourne have played their way well into the grand final as we see Goss kicking it downfield uh, to his brother Kevin Goss. And he, as you can see, takes the mark on the centre wing, playing it down to the uh, flank position here, looking for Christo, but the ball is shot back again to Kennedy. Kennedy of Sandringham to the half-forward line now, taken here in defence by George Allen. Allen kicking it wide, putting Port into attack towards Critch. Critch uh, waiting there, allows Harlan to knock it back to him. He gets bumped out of the road, and the ball kicked away there uh, by Lyons, out towards the uh, centre wing, and we see it taken by Hutchison. Hutchison now driving Sandringham into an attacking position, but Stibart is there, strong in defence, again for Port Melbourne. Neville Stibart, a very good defender, right from the first quarter putting Port back into attack again along that flank, but a good mark over here taken by Hutchison. Hutchison very dominant early, but uh, he's been uh, tabbed pretty well since, and uh, not able to be effective, uh, as, as effective as he was earlier. Kicked away by Stibart, putting uh, Port into attack again. 
And there's one of the best marks you'd ever want to see from uh, Rasmussen. Let's watch that on replay, on the CUB slow-mo replay. Watch the soaring leap. Oh, glorious. Well, if um, Bill Thompson and um, Ted Henrys doesn't select him as the best player, I'll do the Burke Street job. It doesn't give them much choice now. <laughs> I might add that we've just informed him of that. I, I might add that was his 13th mark, uh, Rasmussen. We're watching Jimmy Christo now, and he's uh, played one of the best games I've seen him play for a while today. He's within kicking distance off the side of his boot. Let's go to Craig Kelly. Yes, Don, over here at the 23-minute mark, Morty Alec have got the game in their grass to go to first division. 17-15, 117, 14-10, 94, Yallable, and a crowd of around 10,000 to see Morty Alec take the second division grand final out. 23 and a half minutes gone in the uh, last quarter, and uh, we may have a look at that mark of Rasmussen's again uh, a little later because that was probably the mark of the match. On the scoreboard here, it's uh, 153 to 109. Port Melbourne in a winning position at the moment. The ball back onto the Port half forward line, and in defence we see Gould taking the mark for Sandringham. He kicks it wide to the centre wing on the outer side. Over here, Lord on the ground for Sandringham, knocks it back, but he's going to get the free kick for being infringed against, and the big fellow for Sandringham taking the free kick. Law, but is, kicking it to the uh, flank position, and over here the mark taken by Lyons. Lyons now looking for a lead downfield in Sandringham's attacking zone. Oh, good mark to Beecroft. He's been a sound defender with his strong marking uh, and strong defence all day. In towards the uh, centre of the ground, and a mark taken by Kevin Goss. Port Melbourne 21-27 to Sandringham 17-7. It's out towards uh, George Allen on the uh, centre wing. Allen downfield to Bernie Evans, one of the best players on the ground. Beautiful sidestep, but he loses the ball. So I guess it wasn't too beautiful. Picked up here by Coeli. Coeli a hand pass across here to Carroll. Carroll in defence for Sandringham. Sandringham very ragged at the moment. The ball in towards the centre. And Port Melbourne coming down the ground again as Critch tries to get it. A negative passage of play. Picked up by Bell. Bell gets a hand pass across to Lyons. Lyons a long shot in towards goal. And it's a goal to Sandringham. All day. Very good game. 25 and a half minutes gone in the uh, last quarter of the second semi-final. VFA First Division and Port Melbourne have played their way uh, through a brilliant third quarter into the grand final on Sunday week as they ca come into a defensive position here and Beecroft takes yet another strong mark. Port Melbourne 21-27, 153, uh, going on to uh, beat Sandringham, 18-7, 115. Christo in the centre, plays it down towards uh, the half-forward line, and Harland, Harland's long kick, puts the ball towards Fred Cook. Cook not able to get it on that occasion, he's already kicked nine goals. It'll be... And Cook appealing for the free kick for the ball being uh, knocked away out of bounds on the full. It'll be a fitting uh, climax to this game if Cook could get his 10th goal. There's Morty Alec going uh, on to uh, take out this game, 118 to 94. And the final quarter, and of course play their way into first division in the VFA. Port Melbourne 153, Sandringham 115. Fred Cook at full forward has kicked nine goals. The best player in the game has been awarded to Ivan Rasmussen, who's been a magnificent player for Port Melbourne today. In defence, is picked up by Carroll. He gets it across here to uh, Thompson. Downfielder comes to Coeli. Coeli of Sandringham kicking it to the half-forward line, putting them into attack again. Hutchison's there. Hutchison tries to pull the mark in, but the uh, ball is taken by Ivanov. Ivanov, the dashing halfback for the Port team, kicking it to the centre wing. And over here he finds Paul Goss. Paul Goss on the centre wing and kicking it into the forward pocket. Rasmussen again gets the front position. Knocked away from him on this occasion by Thompson. It comes out here towards Harland. Harland hooks the ball back towards the forward pocket. A punch forward by Hainan. Hainan gets it across to Kevin Goss. Goss uh, gets up ended at the last minute. Comes in again. Tries to pick the ball up. He gets bumped out of the road. Picked up by Hainan. Hainan a snapshot in towards goal, but it's one point only. A point to Port Melbourne to add to their already mammoth total. They moved to 21-28.
and Sandringham 18 7 115 time on being played on the last quarter 27 and a half minutes gone and Sandringham through Kennedy coming into attack once more to the half forward line here should be holding the man and the free kick will go to Bell Bell on the Sandringham half forward line as Philip Gibbs takes up the commentary. Thank you, Don. And here's the uh, kick now going up towards Sandringham's forward zone. Big fellas wanted. High flyers here, but the opportunity for Stibbard to get it through for Port Melbourne and break away with it. Plays it out here to Allen, and Allen will take an effortless mark. Immediately hand passes to Greening. Greening can do a further hand pass if he wants to, but they're trying to get it down to Cook to get his tenth goal up as Hainan comes in to take the mark. Look at this. They're running riot here at Port Melbourne. That ends up with Kevin Goss now, and Gossy now can shoot for goal, he's running right in and there's the mark taken by Christo that's unnecessary frustration though would cause it as Christo is about to kick I'd say the 22nd goal, he's kicked one goal five so he better improve his percentage here and he'd be thinking of it no doubt too as he moves in Oh, close, but he's made it two goals for them playing in the final series of 1977. That's a tremendous performance by them. Now they have to get over uh, Coburg next week so they can have another shot at Port Melbourne the week after. Well, we're at the 29-minute mark into the final quarter, and again, a mark taken by Rasmussen. Rasmussen gets it across here, and he's got it to Buster Harland. Harland takes the shot for goal, and there's another one on. And uh, stops in time, or finishes in time. <laughs> Oh, yes. The girls are enjoying themselves out there today, aren't they? And there's the knockout from Anderson now, straight across here uh, towards Evans. Evans couldn't break away. Anderson having a bit of trouble in the middle of the pack, and the umpire will open up play. Port Melbourne 23 28. But there's the Yarraville Mordialic score. Mordialic will move into first division by the look of it 132 to Yarraville's 94. Let's hope we see a bit of them next year, too. Both Ted and myself uh, tipped Yarraville earlier today, and that tip's come undone. Oh, right, uh, here's Ivanov. Uh, I just wanted to correct that, Phil. I tipped Morty Alec. No, Craig did. All right, there it goes wide to the centre, towards the uh, wing position, and Hainan flying into the ball again to take a good mark. <laughs> excitement reigns supreme here. She's not a Sandy supporter for sure. And uh, here we have now Kevin Goss or Mal, uh, George Allen playing it down towards Cook but Cook gave his opponent Buse a bit of a shove then. And quite rightly the umpire has uh, given Buse the free kick. Well here's the kick from Buse towards the uh, centre of the ground and Annanson is the player to take the mark. 31 and a half minutes into the final quarter. So it won't be that long before it's all over down here as we have Annanson going for a short pass across to George Allen and he's taken the mark at centre half forward. Well there's uh, Freddie Cook's firm in the background there. Wall Pamir on its way towards the uh, centre forward zone. Up they fly for it. Bit of crowding going on the forward line. Little Goss bumps his opponent out of the road and it goes over the line and out of bounds. Will Cook have uh, time to kick his tenth? He's kicked nine so far. And I might add that Sandringham are not all that bad. Port Melbourne got away from them in the third quarter. And there's Wilkins now. Uh, ironic cheers, but he's played a good captain's game right throughout the day. There's uh, Rasmussen, um, or is it Ivanov? Ivanov receiving a bit of attention and will get the free kick. So Ivanov uh, goes back to take the free at centre half back. Goes for the short pass across here and it comes off to Greening. Greening now with his shot wide of the centre, out under the uh, wing position there with Robert Critch coming down. And there goes the siren with Port Melbourne winning 23-28, 166. Sandringham 18-7, 115. Here's Craig Kelly now over at Turak Park. Well, over here at uh, the Turak Park ground, Morty Alec are going into first division there. 19 133 to Yarraville, 14-11-95. And they've gone right away in the last quarter, Morty Alec. Uh, there goes the siren, so Morty Alec are premiers in second division. And you can see the Morty Alec supporters crowd their players. But Morty Alec could have been lucky. In the last three minutes of this game, they had 17 players on the ground. 17, but no one from Yarraville noticed it, so they got away with it and move into first division with a win of 19-19-133. 14-11, 95.
Right back here, and you can see the atmosphere in this one after the siren has gone as well. Port Melbourne 23 28, 166. Defeated Sandringham 18 7, 115. Don Hyde, your comments on the game, and uh, who do you think will win next week? Well, Phil, uh, we all tipped Port Melbourne to win the game today, and uh, we saw in the third quarter when they kicked 11 goals what a great side they are. Uh, I felt all the year they were the favourites for the final, and uh, I'm sure they are still. They go into the grand final. Uh, firm favourites on Sunday week. Next week, Sandringham plays Coburg. I believe that even after their hard game today, Sandringham will have uh, too much skill and determination, and I think they'll win it, and I think they'll play uh, Port again in the grand final. Ted Henrys. I thought it was a great game of football today, Phil. It's started off with uh, the, the winning uh, result being in doubt right up until about halfway through the third quarter. Brilliant football by Port Melbourne in the third quarter, but you must commend Sandringham for their performance in this match here today. Up until half-time, it looks as if they were going to uh, take it away from Port Melbourne. As regards next week's match, Phil, it's probably a bit early to select until you can have a look at the teams, but on Sandringham's performance so far to date, they'd have to come in favourites against Coburg. Righto, and uh, having a look at the last quarter there and the third quarter, Port Melbourne are the class side. Even though they kicked 28 behinds today, 23-28, Sandringham 18-7, 115. Sandringham, uh, as we've said often, have trouble on a big ground, and I don't know. Uh, next week's match is pretty iffy. Uh, immediately seeing this one, I'd go for Sandringham, but I think Coburg have a very big chance.